On today's episode of Titus and Tate, panic button season is officially here. It's uh, we we've been talking about it a little bit, Tate. We've been we've Ooh. been trying to uh, kick the tires on who needs to hit the panic button, who doesn't. Um, I I I, I don't know. I, I I'm I I I don't know if I can do the show today, honestly. With right. with how Ohio State's. Been. I'm not even sure it's panic can... button season, as it's. I just wrote in my notes: free fall, all caps, not sky fall, free fall. It, there's a lot of top programs, and it's not just the Buckeyes. We're not going to talk about just the Buckeyes. We're going to talk about the Huskies. Yeah, that is where I I've hit the panic button. I've hit it twice. No one responded. It's not working. It's People not just kept in. doing like yeah. what they were doing. Turns out, turns out that uh, we are in free fall. UConn loses Seton Hall. Uh, what is that? Five out of six now. Five out of They've six. They've lost yeah. one in five <laughs> in Big East play for a team that was that that we were sticking our chests out saying we're the best team in college basketball. Right. Uh woof. 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 Woof says the Husky. Mm. Um. And 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 what is the, the Dan Hurley with the with the coat? Like I don't know, man. What are we? Are we? Is are COVID we doing, back? Is COVID back? It is. It, it seems says, like it. It's at Northwestern. It's at Iowa. It's at UConn. What the hell's going on here? Uh, Arkansas also in free fall. Mm, must bust. Uh, the must bust. The wheels he kicked are falling the tires. Off, dude. They're flat. Um, Xavier lost it to Paul. Would you look at that? When, uh, <laughs> right after we got done talking about Xavier going on the road and what'll right. happen if you uh, play right. a, a good team on the road. And sure enough, they played a. Did we jinx it? Because I said, a powerhouse I said Sean DePaul. Miller <laughs> image makeover lock. And maybe not. Um, court storming season is officially here too. By the way, mm. Kansas State big win over Kansas. Uh, storm in the court. That was the first. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if that was the first one of the season, but that was the first one that uh, that um, you know it was like felt like a moment. You right. know, whereas the the rivalry game and uh, Keontae Johnson on the winning on on that play on a on Amazing. a hoop dude dunking on a dude. Like, right. Jalen Wilson balling out. Mm -hmm. um, that was a fun game. Uh, Iowa State gets another huge ESPN Plus win. Uh, over Texas, nobody saw. No it. one saw it. Nobody watched. Um, I did see that Caleb Grill is alive. Uh, yeah. I thought that he only played one game for Iowa State this season, but uh, he was telling the Texas bench to take a timeout after hitting a three, so he's alive. And you well. guys, Carolina lost Iowa State, right? Caleb but, Grill, we but, lost to Caleb. But that's Grill. a quality loss. Like the more Iowa right. State keeps winning, that's a quality loss. Right, of course. Was that game on ESPN Plus? All of as Carolina's well? losses are Q one. <laughs> so for all the Q guys out there. You hate to see it. Uh, no, the article I read about the Iowa State game was awesome. It made it seem like <laughs> the game was a ton of fun. I read so the play by I read play. The, I read the box score, and it looked it looked awesome. Uh, Tate, I have a question for you. Are you any closer to figuring out? You said last mm. show you uh, you're trying to zag. Everyone else is everyone else is zacking mm -hmm. on the uh, the national player of the year race. Are right. you going to zag? I don't know. I, we'll, we'll, I am I'm, not picking okay. Drew Timmy, no, but I I do think that Brandon Miller is helping my case. Have he you is, figured it out? He's you, building a case. You said you said you wanted to go somewhere else, and I was curious if you figure it out it seems like brandon miller might be your guy i don't know maybe we'll talk about that he's always bit. been my guy he's always been right in front of me but it does feel like a little bit where he's the de facto number two so you don't want to just settle on I, number two i want to talk about all american teams because mm. the, the national player of the year race is is done but uh you know there's there are other trophies to hand out there are other right. honors to bestow on people so maybe we talk about that a little bit also fun treat i'm so excited for this john fanta is joining the show for the first time ever amazing uh, i i don't know why it's taken so long he's he works at fox now He's a Fox guy. He's uh. He's, I could have sworn we had him on the show just because we talk about John Fanta. We talk it's about such Fanta a loving all way. the time. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> you're right, dude. Like it is. It is. It's one of those deals where you just assume that it happened. It had not happened, so mm. we said let's make this happen. And uh, we talked to John Fanta for a little over half an hour. I think it was a fun interview. He's the best. Um, could have been forever. So, we could yeah. have just kept talking to him. So we have that coming up. Also, we're going to be talking a little frauds, Tate. As you said, it's mm. free fall Friday, which mm. means we got to talk about the frauds right. in this sport. They're we all around call them out. They're yeah. they're everywhere. <laughs> the, the The fraud power ranking committee mm. is the 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 suggestion box is officially over. If if we had a voicemail line, it's full. It mm. would just say like this voicemail box is full. Please call back. Goodbye and right. hang up. Like you can't even take any more suggestions. There's so many out there. I, I, this is all people do to me. Is they teams are losing three, four, five in a row, and they're like, put, "Please put them on the fraud power rankings." And I said, "There's only five spots, mm. so we're gonna we're gonna see who's on it this week." All that coming up. But first, Woody Durham. All right, uh, where do we want to start with this, Tate? A lot of a lot of to sus. The last night we saw UConn lose, but again, this is kind of a, a common thing. Like, how many times <laughs> is UConn going to lose, and we're going to say, "Oh my gosh, oh my god, what is happening?" Yes, is it is it not shocking anymore? Yeah, uh, Xavier losing is is pretty. Suley Boom had a terrible game, terrible, terrible game, and I guess like in that regard, um, it's it's not surprising because it's you know your best player and the guy that's been balling out for you all season 
doesn't play well. Uh, but it's still, you, you got to beat the Paul. You got to beat the Paul. That's if you're the gonna rules. win the Big East. You got to yeah. beat the Paul. That's always. The, that's, <laughs> that's what it, people always say. Like, I don't you know. Got to beat the Paul. I don't know this to be true, but I'm gonna say it confidently mm-hmm. anyway. No one has ever won the Big East without, but, but no one has ever lost to DePaul and also won the Big East right. in the same season. That's never happened. That is the Big Ten stat of the week, <laughs> right there, folks. Put it together, print it out, stamp it. It's uh, for me. You you mentioned all these losses. I mean, there's another one, Arkansas. I mean, they're in free fall. Yeah. I mean, they kind of have been in free fall, but we have to point that out. Virginia Tech is a sneaky team that is also in free fall. <sighs> that they were supposed to be good. How many have they lost in a row now? I mean, they've lost every ACC game except for North Carolina. They have won every. Uh, they have lost every other game in the ACC. They lost to Virginia at Virginia. Steph Curry was at the game. It was a very uh, full circle moment for all the Virginia Tech fans, right? That you're mad at Seth Greenberg for not recruiting Seth Curry or Steph Curry, and then he's at Virginia with Ty Jerome. Was he cheering for Virginia? Yes, pulling for he Virginia. Was? Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Two Virginia Tech fans. I was like one of the greatest trolls I've ever seen. That's that's hilarious. Love to see that. They've only lost six in a row, dude. That's not even that bad. I think they can bounce back. I'm just saying we're talking free fall. We're talking free fall. Like a five game losing streak, not that big. Not that bad. I don't think. I, don't right. think that's that bad. I think when he gets to eight or seven, seven's probably my number. When you get to that seven losing streak, that's what I'm worried about you. But yeah, there's a lot of losers. There's a lot of free fall. There's a lot of. Uh, you know, screaming to the sky, shaking of fists yeah. in college basketball right now. I mean, UConn is kind of boring because it's right there in front of us. Dan Hurley, fix it. I can't believe. I mean, are we still doing COVID takes? Like, can, do I? Do right. I, do I think I we're to, safe. Do I? I mean, I think we're safe. But like when I saw that, that Dan Hurley's not coaching because, I mean, I guess like if you're sick, you can't coach, right? But like, right. But I, I don't know. I, I, I hate this world. I just hate this world. I hate, I hate that. Like. <laughs> Well, and then you have UConn fans that are saying, if he is coaching, we win a one possession game. But but, but also, maybe they're right. But this calculus, this math that you're throwing together of like the what ifs and that you lost. And <laughs> and I don't know what to do with it. I'm worried. I'm concerned. Like I said, I've hit the panic button. No one has reacted. No one has responded. Congrats to Shaheen Holloway. Great win. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I just uh, when I saw these COVID headlines that, that Northwestern Iowa was canceled and mm-hmm. Dan Hurley. I mean, I, 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 I'm at a loss, dude. Like, I, I've, 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 expi- I've been at a loss for years on this, on this. Sh- can't continue to, to talk about this. And, John Fanta, and- our guest, scooped it. By the way, the the Northwestern Iowa game. Oh, did he? He scooped it with. Uh, he didn't even put. You know, a lot of times these scoopers, they they like to preface the scoop with all caps, scoop colon, and then they give you the scoop. Our boy Fanta, true journalist, he scoops it all caps news. Cole, this is no scoop. This is news. news. And uh, the news is they are not. News playing is a game. good way to break a story. I think. Right. I think breaking like the problem. The problem with breaking is seems like you're excited about it. Yeah. Like you want to yeah. report this terrible news. Yeah. It has a weird connotation, even and, if you don't mean it that way. That's what happens. And I think people have used it sarcastically too much, where they're like right. breaking. I'm. I. I ate two burritos mm-hmm. instead of one or something. Right. You know, breaking. Like I haven't to, taken a shower in a week. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Things like yeah. that. You're a, like, that's a gym tweet, isn't it? Right. I, I think that's. I think gym. both of those yeah. are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Book. I saw that one. Um. No, breaking. Breaking is is when I see breaking, I don't. It, news is classy. When you, you you do all caps news. It is classy and classic. <laughs> And when I saw that, I didn't even get upset about the news. I did have a, I, I was confused though, because I didn't know this was happening still, but it's happening. No, like it breaks watch. my brain because like I, 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 my instinct is like, this is bull- bullshit. Like why, how Dan Hurley, who cares? Coach, the, coach the game. Mm-hmm. But then you're, you're like rational about it. And you're like, I don't, I don't know if you're sick, you probably shouldn't be coughing all over everybody and you should probably stay home. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that I guess is a positive coming out of a pandemic is we shouldn't just get everybody sick. Um, but then. The other part of me is like, win the game, win the game, <laughs> win the game, and also like, just win. I think back to I don't know, like every every time I I talk about college basketball, I think back to my experience, and you're like, I can't imagine a world in which your coach is like, I tested, I, you know, I I had like a little bit of a cough, so I, I didn't I'm, coach I'm the fi- game. I'm fine if he doesn't want to be there for everyone's safety. Yeah. I'm fine with it, but we have to update. He should have been on an iPad. It should have been his face on have. an iPad, and yeah. it should have been like on a little like you know a scooter. scooter, right? Yeah. And then yeah. he, Dan Hurley is calling the ref clowns over Zoom. It's like cutting in and out, so he's not getting teed up or anything. I agree. But he's saying whatever he wants in the comfort of his own home. Do something. Do something. I just innovate. Don't. I just don't. I I don't want to. Uh, I, I I don't like. Innovate. Like, I, like like COVID has gotten to the point where you see it. I I don't even have. I, I can't even form like thoughts on it. I just I see it and I just like. 
brain melted. It's my brain, my brain melts. Right. That's where I'm at. Right. I think I'm going to do a I top can't... 10 list of things that broke my brain. It's just this broken year my in college brain, basketball. I'm like the head coach of a team in free fall that I thought was the best team in the country is not coaching tonight because of COVID. And it's 2023. And I mean, let's be I'm honest. Like, what is, is UConn ranked next Monday? In the they people? can't be. They can't be. Right. They can't be. Oh. And if you told us that three weeks ago, like I, I saw our, our, our guy, Big Cat, tweeted like on January 9th, my futures for the year it was like Tennessee and UConn. And at the time that he <laughs> tweeted that, I said to myself, That's, those are great picks. No, I was like, yeah. those, those are good picks. I, I think that those are two teams that I could see in Houston. And now I sit here. Tennessee has me worried. And UConn, like I said, free fall. There's only w- one word. Free fall. Free fall. Yeah. Free fall. I, I, I'm, I'm so, I'm so in my feelings about the Buckeyes right now. That yeah. I can't, can't, I want to give really, you, I want to give you your space. I can't comprehend. Like, I, 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 maybe that's why my brain's broken. It's like, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I, I didn't really watch the UConn game last night, to be honest with you. Cause I was, I was watching Ohio state open the game, like one for 27 against Nebraska. Right. Um, and, the biggest must win game of the season. I think uh I if I remember correctly, we beat the hell out of Northwestern. I came on the show and I said, I'm not there yet, but I'm trending towards being happy about this team. <laughs> right. I, I would like the listeners to You were know, building the case. Yeah, I was like, I uh-huh. think there's a world in which by the time March rolls around, I will believe in this team. Um, so But you were saying it to you were saying haters. Get your get, get your knives get ready. Out. Yeah. Get ready. We have not this. won a game since then. Since I tweeted that someone on Purdue is going to hit a buzzer beater to beat us, uh, we have not only lost that game to Purdue, we've lost four more. Um mm. but I'm not panicking because one, I don't like every <laughs> shout out Adam Jardy, friend of the program, Columbus Dispatch. Working it, working uh, the beat. He uh he pointed the stat out to me the first time in program history. Here's your Big Ten stat of the day, Tim. Oh, no. First time in the history of Ohio State's program, dating back to 1641, the first season of basketball in Columbus. <laughs> the first 1641. time. 1641. <laughs> James Town was settled. James Town was settled. Some 30 years Riding earlier. Riding horses to the game. <laughs> and the Buckeyes were playing the ball. Lo- the Lost Colony. They're like, who's up in Ohio? Uh, <laughs> Bare feet. <laughs> <laughs> were shoes even in there? Uh... The first time in program history that Ohio State has lost five straight by single digits. So we're losing these games. I don't know if that makes it better or worse, but we're we're in every game, and at the end of every game, you're like, "There's if we can just if we can just you keep saying that to yourself. If we could just if we could just, uh, it's not happening. But the good news is for my Ohio State fans out there, I am going to Columbus on Saturday, and I am personally delivered. This is a guarantee. I'm looking into the camera right now. Um. This is happening. I'm I I am bringing a win to Columbus, Ohio. We are beating Iowa. You can print it. You can aggregate it. You can send it to Fran McCaffrey. You can make Fran <laughs> make this your bulletin board material. I don't right. care. You can tell your whole team like that that Titus was saying this and that about us. It's not even about you. That's the thing, Iowa. It's not. It's not about mm-hmm. you. It's about it's about us. It's about the Buckeyes. I am personally going to Columbus and guaranteeing that we will beat Iowa. We will turn the season around. I will bring my championship DNA. I'm taking vials of my championship <laughs> dna i'm injecting it into our players and away we go and we're right. back and your win the ohio state win or the yeah the, the win for carolina over ohio state will will once again be a good win it has to be uh i, promise I, you I have never i've never pulled for ohio state harder than i have uh since our time in madison square garden together um i look at the schedule ahead i like iowa at Illinois is tough. At Indiana is tough. It's tough. So you it's have tough. to win on Saturday. We have, we're winning. We like, are winning. If, if you do not win on Saturday, not I, the- <laughs> you have to come in like Austin Powers when he lost his mojo. You know, you have to go in the locker room, have the mojo, and say, guys, this is for you. This is my championship you, DNA. I'm, I'm injecting my championship DNA. I'm also, <laughs> uh, a lot of coaches don't like this. Um, it, it, it feels way too early. It might feel like a desperation move. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It's just reality we're living in, Tate. I'm, I'm pulling out the 40 minutes for the rest of your life speech. Right. I am. In right. January. Now, a lot of people would say you save that for April, uh, maybe March, obviously, mm. you know, like maybe in the Sweet 16, Elite Eight. Uh, I, I would say that like the Blue Blood program say that's the national championship only <laughs> speech that you give. Um, but here we are, you know. But this I, might, I this boy, might this, be for this the might national title. Yeah. <laughs> Great glass in case of emergency. <laughs> I'm walking into that locker room and I'm giving the 40 minutes for the rest of your life speech and we're going to beat Iowa. And that's, that's that. All right, let's go to the spin zone real quick. In the five games that you've lost, Purdue, 
that should have been a win, but Purdue had already lost the big 10, the powers that be, they're not going to let Purdue lose two in a row, especially as the number one team in the country. So, but, but also Zed like, yeah. Okay. The spin zone. Zed key was out. Zed, Zed key, key was out. Was okay. Out game. Yeah. Uh, Ohio state at Maryland schedule, schedule loss. loss. Throw that out. <laughs> Minnesota at Ohio state. That was the, the cameras. That was Fo Fox fault. So throw that one out. Ohio state at Rutgers revenge game. Throw that one out. Also, a a yeah, the Big Ten literally said that Ohio State didn't deserve the first win against Rutgers. Right. So, like, our Revenge. backs were against the wall. We took it to overtime, right. technically a tie. Right. Greg yeah. Sankey's not letting you win that game. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. Uh, and then Nebraska, you've struggled historically with Nebraska. And by that, <laughs> I mean the last the last two years. Nebraska, we just didn't make shots. Right. So, so when I look at that schedule, I see a lot of uh, could be wins. I see Purdue should have been wins. I see Purdue injury. I see Maryland schedule loss. Right. I see Minnesota's Fox's fault. Right. <laughs> I see Rutgers bad matchup, and I see Nebraska. We didn't make shots. Right. Um. So I don't see loss. So as as a as a guy that's looking at the resume of North Carolina and quality wins, I think Ohio State stays on the quality wins. Colon. I've been there. told that the vibes are still are not as bad as you might think. Within mm. the locker room of the program, I've been told that uh, now is that good or bad? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think I that's think, bad. Like, I, I think, think the I vibe, want us to. I think the vibe should be down. I think I want. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, 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 I just, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I can. I'm going, I'm going, I'm, I'm bringing a win. I don't know if it's gonna save everything, but we're, we're beating Iowa on Saturday, and I'll be there for. I haven't been, I haven't been to a game at the shot in I at least five years. Not since I've lived in LA. When's I moved to LA what? in 2019, so like it's been at least four years. But I don't think I. I think in the Holtman era, I haven't been to a game at the shot. It, it, it dawned on me that I don't think I've flown back for a game. Um, but enough is enough. And I have to bring, I'm bringing my championship today. <laughs> right. That's why I wore my championship hat today for the show. Right. Big 10 champions. I'm trying to remind them. This is what we do. We do, we do not, we are what in the, in the conference right now. We are mm -hmm. at the very bottom. Yeah. Minnesota is below us. We are two and five. Minnesota's one and five, but they beat us. So. That's where we're at, dude. It's 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 maybe it was a sacrificial loss for the the level of the Big Ten. You can't have a team like Minnesota be Ofer. You can't have the Gophers be Ofers, <laughs> and, and and be like Georgetown in the Big East. Yeah. You know, because when you have a team that hasn't won a conference game, that's bad if, for the whole conference. If you're gonna talk about yeah, you got to talk about how deep the conference right. is. You have to. So I uh, say fell in the sword for Minnesota, dude. I'm sorry. I don't I don't mean to sit down here and talk about the Buckeyes. I I as just much, but the it's first, free fall. First five game losing streak for us in 25 years. First five game losing streak in twenty five years. It is. It's. It's. It's time. It's not like I don't think it's time to panic. It's time to. Uh, what, what I, I heard someone say one time. Now's not the time to to lose your wits. It's time to to get your wits. You know, like it's mm -hmm. not time to panic. It's time to like lock in. Is what it is. I'm right. hitting the lock in button. I need the lock in button. The, I also the need the upset button. Can we be a little upset? You know. I think that's the issue, dude. Between you and me, I think. Uh, Justice suing is the leader of the team, but he's bringing the Hawaii. He's not vibes. the leader of the team. He might. I be love the, Justice. That, that's the might problem. be the best like, player. We have, on the team. we have high character guys. I love the guys. I love. We're so talented, but like Zed Key should be the leader of the team and also the best player, but he's not either. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's hurt, and he was hurt. He's banged up a little bit, but I feel like if it starts with Zed and then it goes to Justice and then it goes to Sensabaugh, the order of operations makes sense. But now Sensabaugh is obviously since his start against North Carolina is obviously the best player on the team. Obviously should be the primary option, but that doesn't work in the order of operations of college basketball. And if you're just suing and you have a similar game and you're trying to go to a similar place, the NBA, and this guy who's younger than you is doing it better than you, you're going to feel some type of way. This is college basketball. I don't think he, I don't think he does, though. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't he, think doesn't. he does. I'm I just telling I, you. I'm I, telling you, the order of operations when I look at Ohio State, it had an order of operations when we were in Maui, and it made I sense. Think, starts, starts with Zed. Yeah. Then it goes to Justice, then it goes to Bryce or whoever it may but be. But when we were in Maui, like, here's the issue is our, our captain, our leader of the team is Hawaiian. So when we were in Maui, it made sense. Everything, everything was comfortable. Right. We're at a point now where we need like we how need many a, captains do we have? We need an asshole like Evan Turner on this team to to like during the timeout, right? Like push the coach out of the way. Bring and grab Evan. guys by the jersey. Bring and yell Evan at this him. weekend. I'll text him. That's a good idea. I, I should. I, I I I'll see if Evan wants to go. And and should this be an all hands on deck meeting? I think I just, so. I text all the former players. I tell Greg and John to like not go to the Butler game. Right. <laughs> Drive over to Columbus. I think so. Because Evan, <laughs> I get is, Coach Mata to come too. <laughs> Evan's the type where like I think Coach Holtman, out of respect, his you know his jersey's hanging the Raptors. He's like, I'll turn it over to you know Evan yeah. Turner. And I think Evan is the type where you think he's gonna say something motivational, maybe fire you guys up. Yeah. And then I think Evan just goes in there and says, "Y'all think sweet, but y'all suck." <laughs> 
<laughs> and I think, and I think that's exactly maybe what they need to hear. Y'all are some bums. Yeah, that's, he's like y'all think she's sweet. Yeah, that, that's my favorite thing to say when <laughs> <laughs> when people are not up to par. <laughs> Turns out not sweet. Oh my god, dude! I would five games in a row though. We can't have this. Saturday, it has to happen. It's it is happening. I'm I'm promising it's happening. Lock of the century. Saturday, um, Buckeyes win. It's never been more of a lock. It's it's been it's I I, I stake my whole reputation. <laughs> How could I? Is there anything else I could say that could be thrown back in my face, Tate? I think I've hit them all. I think I've hit every single thing that could possibly be said. But uh, uh, we can move on. But um, it's it's yeah. Th- this is this is th- these are unprecedented times. And is and Holt last thing is Holtman. I mean, what what is the status with Holtman the with seat? the fans? The, I've seen fans tweeting some things like "Get Holtman out of my face." So this is, but this then is, I looked at their avatar and they have uh, Ohio State football jersey on. Do you? And, yeah. <laughs> they have Ohio State football jersey, and then they're like, "I I, I I've seen I can't tell you how many Ohio State fans I've seen say, uh, um, you know, they obviously miss Aaron Kraft. They're like, I wish I, we had Aaron Kraft on this team. Me too. Um, I do too. Aaron Kraft <laughs> is do, a great. I do, I like do too. Aaron Kraft is a great player. <laughs> Um, but then <laughs> the Steve Jason <laughs> Aaron Kraft is awesome. Uh, I, I, I saw one guy talking about like Aaron, Aaron Kraft. Uh, I don't know, dude, I, I, I'll, whatever. This is nitpicky, but like, like the, the Ohio State basketball fans believe that Aaron Kraft is like a better point guard than Mike Conley was. And that's, that's the issue. That's where we start there with like, right. Our viewpoint on a little basketball. bit different. Yeah. And you're like, all right. But but then again, I'm a guy who thinks Tom Coverdale is the best player in college basketball right. history. So I guess it's not, who am I to talk? It's not worth um, arguing. Yeah. But uh, uh, so Holt hot seat hot seat status. Do you want the the uh, um? I'll, I'll tell you what's going to happen, or do you want like my thoughts on? What? I want your thoughts on where where is Holtman in the zeitgeist of the Ohio State faithful? Oh, and he's then, out. And, he's out. There, he's out. Yeah, that's Hold, ridiculous. Hold is hated. Holt that's is, ridiculous. Yeah. Hol- I find that ridiculous. If you polled Ohio State fans and said, should we fire Chris Holtman? I'm guessing it's like 85% yes right now. All right. So yeah. then if we poll Kentucky fans, should we hire Chris should we Holtman? Hire Chris Holtman? <laughs> 89% says yes. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, and I, and I don't think, uh, <laughs> I, I, we, we, have, we have good basketball. We, there are some good basketball fans. So I don't want to generalize, but right. for the most part, yeah. it's like, we're talking like about, Yeah, we're talking about the cesspools. The, the, yeah, the, the, the bottom of the barrel Ohio State fans that don't even pay attention until after football season's over. Look at the record and then mm-hmm. say, this isn't good enough. And it's like, get this guy out of my yeah, face. Yeah, get this guy out of my face. Right. Um, but yeah, Holt, we, we, we've not had NCAA tournament success. Now, the, 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 whole, the whole arc is like, there's always some would say excuses, some would say reasons, some would say you know like there's there's it's a sliding scale. There are a lot of injuries. Kyle Young gets a concussion every time someone coughs on him. You know, right? The the uh uh the Oral Roberts loss was bad, but like that whole year is weird. Like the you know the COVID years were weird. That's 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 the reality of the situation. Mm-hmm. That's how it was for every team. So you know ultimately we're all on the same level. But uh yeah the 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 lack of NCAA tournament success uh this this January once we hit the 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 Big 10 schedule this seems to happen a lot where the wheels you know look like they're about to fall off we are not great at closing games i think Holt's too nice of a guy i i would say Holt might be good guy of the year candidate honestly because Holt needs to these guys for right. lack of a better that's the only term that comes to mind he needs to right. he needs to do that he i don't think he has that in him um, so yeah, the fans are frustrated as they should be. Ten and eight's not good enough for this team. We're way too talented to to, to be on a five game losing streak. But uh, we're not. He's not gonna get fired unless like the only way he gets fired this year is if the wheels like you think this is the wheels falling off. Like the wheels falling off is we finish the season twelve and whatever. Don't you know? make the tournament. And don't or make something. the you know yeah. we 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 have another we we have a nine game losing streak and then another nine game losing streak something like that. Um, you were we, saying about like who's to blame, like the reasons or the whatever. I mean, I think uh, a culprit that is at play, which is always a, a culprit in our universe, is the NBA. The NBA you. has played Silver. a huge part in Ohio State and taking away pieces that should be tangible pieces. But as we know, these scouts, they're only looking at these top programs and then they find one guy, they, you know, and then it all goes from there. No, it's true. It that, started with Kata like, Bates Dia. Basically, the Chris Holman at Ohio State is there are a lot of great reasons as to why we can't get over the hump. But then you hurt you hit a certain saturation point with the reasons where you're like, these are just excuses at this point. You right. know what I mean? Right. So like there's always it actually makes sense. Like as you said, you're losing these guys in the league that you didn't think you're gonna lose. And you're you know, you're hanging around these close games, but then at the end of the day, 
college fandom is about college basketball fandom is about like how you feel right. ultimately. Mm -hmm. And if you're a fan and you're watching the game, you're like, I don't like this. I don't like what we're doing. Then you don't, you don't need to hear, you don't, it doesn't help for someone to be like, yeah, but what if Malachi Branham was still here? Yeah. But like, mm -hmm. but also look at these losses. We're right there. We're right there. <laughs> you know, no one wants to hear that. You're like, we're right. 10 and eight, dude. This sucks. Five game losing streak. What the hell's going on? You know? And this is what year five for coach. Year Holt? six. Year six. No, no, but he's not, he's, we got a great recruiting class and this was the plan. Like, we need Bronny. I said we at need the Bronny start, tonight. I we said we need start, Bronny to commit ASAP. I said at the start of the year, if we make the tournament, that's that was my expectation going into the season. Just make the tournament, we'll be fine. We can still make the tournament. A lot of basketball left to be played. Um, I, we're going to win against Iowa on Saturday, and away we go. So there it is. That's Seven all. years oh. is 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 always the time. That's when father time and coaching comes knocking. You're right. So next year, yeah, he, he's going to be back next year. He's gonna of be course, back. he's gonna be back. But that's I'm, what, I'm here but, to tell Ohio State fans. But you like, we're not, you we're not restart, fire, and, nor should we. You restart year three if you get Bronny. You know, yeah, yeah. Like the Ohio State football fans learned Chris Holtman's name year three. Like they were still saying, "Come on, Thad Mata." Yeah. And then, then they locked in. So he's really on year three, year four right now. I think it happens. It's, I, I, I share the frustration. We have to do better. We have to be better. We have to get tougher. We like all these things. I'm in agreement, but um. Yeah, we're we're not firing Holman, and we shouldn't. Please and, don't. And yeah, that's that would that's be dumb. I, I just and I just don't. I don't want to be a program that does that. I don't want to be a program right. that's like just constantly firing coaches and trying to find save that for Indiana. That's what Indiana should. I mean, be doing. they should fire every coach and try to hire Brad Stevens. That's the Indiana move. Well, it that's goes back to basketball. what we said: firing Thad in the first place. That was dumb. Yeah, I mean, it was dumb. Right, that was dumb. That's what I said at the time. I was like, "What <laughs> right. are we like?" I get that we had a bad year, but like, what are we doing? Like, this mm -hmm. is not what this program should be. So I don't. I don't want to be that. That's not us. And guess who was hurt? Kate Bates Diop. So. We all we all know how this goes. We Let's know move this on. We're, yeah, we'll we're, move on. We're, I don't I don't want to I I really don't I I know people are rolling their eyes but I really don't want to uh I don't I, I my intention is never when we do a show I I don't I, I my favorite shows are when we don't talk about Ohio State good bad or otherwise mm. but same every, with every Carolina because every yeah. time I say something the opposite happens I just just I was thinking about just saying things that I don't want to happen so that the opposite will happen yeah what do they call that reverse jinx <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate talking about it because it's it's but you know five five game losing streak something mm -hmm. has to be done I will do it I'm I'm stepping up we're gonna win on Iowa and then or we're gonna win on Saturday against Iowa and, and that's do you that, think so. that you get your credit when it happens No and I don't need the credit because okay. I that's the thing about being a walk on is like you, you right. do your part mm -hmm. you do you you're donated you're, by anonymous Yes donated by anonymous <laughs> This win has been this championship <laughs> DNA <laughs> this has been donated by anonymous. <laughs> Hang that plaque. Hang that. When we when we make the Sweet Sixteen this year, and we hang hang a banner for a Sweet Sixteen, I wanted to say the championship DNA was donated by Anonymous. Right. Um. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't need the credit. I just uh, something has to be done, and I do like the the idea of an all hands on deck meeting. I should get. I should put together a group text with like all the former players. Right. Where I just put out like a the bat signal meme. <laughs> I, I do think Evan actually would be. I think Evan Turner in this moment, this might be what he's called for. You know. Yeah. Because Evan, I think the players Who's, will take. They will take offense to Evan calling them out and being like, "This is not good enough." Evan Evan would be the guy because Evan's also like around the program enough, and Ev Evan's the guy. Evan Evan's, Evan's the guy that we need to show up in, in the locker room and say, "Y'all are some bums." I and watched Evan Turner on a Zoom video say to Andre Iguodala's face, "You guys ruined basketball, <laughs> and that your championships were flukes." And I've never in my life, I I was like, this man, he will stand in the rain and he will yell, and he does not care. Who I love people that aren't afraid to live in the controversy, as Evan Turner obviously. Who's is. that guy for Carolina? If Carolina's on a five-game losing streak, and you need someone to go in the locker room and say, "Y'all are some bums." Mm. Rasheed Ooh. Wallace. Yeah, yeah. Just like as far That's as respect good. across the That's board, a good Rasheed you know? like even yeah. Hubert Davis is like, "Damn, I'm a bum." Yeah, you know? like, that, that hits everybody. <laughs> yeah, Hubert Hubert's standing behind. Pat him Sullivan's his, like, "Damn, I'm a bum." Rasheed's going off on the team. Hubert standing behind him with his arms crossed, right. nodding along, and then she turns around and points at him. He's like, "You yeah. too. You saw. You saw." <laughs> <laughs> They're all lining up, running suicides after the game. Uh, all right, enough about that. Let's talk to John Fanta. Oh yes, can't wait. All right, joining us now is a uh, man who's making his debut on this show. Tate, can you believe that? It's we, it, it's not right. It doesn't make any sense, right. really, when you think about it. But uh, we are excited to have him nonetheless. He is. I I feel confident in saying this, John, and I hope you're not embarrassed that I call. I, I say this about you. You might be the most likable guy in college basketball and all of college basketball. Dare dare I say lovable? Lovable, the most right. lovable guy in right. all of college basketball. His name is John Fanta. He joins us now. John, what's going on, man? 
It is great to be with you <laughs> fellas. It's wonderful to be on Titus and Tate. Man, Bill Raftery's always going to get that title from my end of things <laughs> as most likable man in college basketball. But it is truly, truly humbling. I have to say to you as well that from the very first time that actually sitting down with him over the summer, it became very apparent to me, even though they're not having a great year, Fab Mata doesn't have a bad bone in his body. Oh, let's go. Oh, See, yeah. this is why this is right. why John is so right. good at what he does. He, he knows how to. <laughs> yeah, he's playing to his crowd. He knows what he's doing, right. dude. He comes on the show, <laughs> says nice things about Thad Mata as Butler's 11 and 9. The whole team's injured, though, John. The mm-hmm. whole team has, like, basically been injured. Everyone like, knows this. Everyone knows this. Right. This is, these are facts. Um, hey. Go ahead. My high school football coach told me after my sophomore year, know what you're good at. You're a whole lot good at talking and going across the way to get the team some food than you are at blocking as a fourth string left guard. Know know what your lane is and just stay the path. Well, I'm I'm glad you talk about uh, your your past here, like your your knowing what you're good at and all that sort of thing, John. Because um, from my perspective, you are a freaking rocket ship to the moon, man. Like you you came out of nowhere from for for me, like consuming college basketball. Um, where I didn't know the name John Fanta, and then suddenly, like it felt like a two-week span. <laughs> Not only did I know the j- name John Fanta, like John Fanta is the guy. And right. Kind of, like, if you need to know anything about Big East basketball, you go to John Fanta. Mm-hmm. Your face is on every Big East game I'm watching. Um, so I'm curious, like, for for the people listening that might not know a ton about you, um, where did you come from? Where did this rocket ship take off from? Um, and how did we get here? So I grew up on the west side of Cleveland. So wow. you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, Cleveland, college basketball, how do those two go together? <laughs> I'm a long-suffering, I guess, Browns fan. Indians, now Guardians, Cavaliers, big Cleveland sports fan. And when you grow up in Cleveland, you eat, breathe, sleep, die, sports. Mm-hmm. And the voices that tell the stories. Here's how I fell in love with college basketball. Wolstein Center, mid-2000s. It is Wake Forest in West Virginia mm. in the NCAA tournament at Great the game. Wolstein Center. My grandpa, whose name is also John, calls up and says, I've got tickets. It's going to be a late night. Little did he know it was going to be a double overtime game that never ended. And that I looked around the stands at the Wolstein Center. There were people asleep mm. by the time the game ended. <laughs> and it was Chris Paul and it was... Pitts Noggle mm-hmm. and Mike Gansey and, and West Virginia just willed itself uh, to win. And I'll never forget falling in love that night with college basketball because walking around the building, everybody's talking about how great that Wake is and that Wake's supposed to win. And West Virginia just found a way to win that game in dramatic fashion to move on. And they had the local kid in, in Mike Gansey. They had so much buzz around them. It was a, it was really amazing. It was really really amazing. That's how I fell in love with college basketball. And you know, you think about it, like we all remember being 11, 12, 13 years old if if we grew up watching college hoops and you come home from school and you're watching the Big East tournament at Madison Square Garden. And mm-hmm. I always remember thinking like, man, that is just the coolest thing. It's inside the best building in the world. It's got all these traditional brands. My freshman year at college was actually the first year of the reconfigured Big East, though, and the first year of the Big East on Fox Sports. And I went to Seton Hall, little, you know, at the time, I mean, not not exactly a a very relevant program. And they took off in my four years there. They won their first Big East tournament in 23 years there. So uh, when I was a student and I just I fell in love with being in New Jersey and having a choice of college basketball games at the drop of a hat, Mm -hmm. not far away from me. And that's how it all came to fruition. Mm, I love that story. And it got me fired up because, you know, there's something about college basketball, that genuineness, you know, that you can see that passion that kind of comes through. And uh, you mentioned Seton Hall, obviously coach Raff coached at Seton Hall back in the day. Must be some in the water. Right. Exactly. Everyone likable. And and he's he's FaceTiming (laughs) us from New Jersey. New Jersey has it, you know, and Rutgers is playing well. New Jersey is is a basketball state. You know, a lot of people know this, but uh, you bring bring up Seton Hall. So I have to bring up the game last night. Casey and Defo gets the rebound, gets the game winner. Uh, Shaheen Holloway gets his first, you know, some would say program win, signature win yeah, of his yeah. new era. Um, so how did it feel being a pirate? I know you have to be objective. We're all objective here, but 
it's college sports. We all have our own team. So how did it feel to watch your Pirates last night get that win? That was as incredible of a win that Seton Hall has had in years. In fact, mm. to give you a number to back it up, it was their largest comeback win in the Big East since 2006. Wow. You'd have to go back to Lewis Orr being the head coach of the <laughs> Pirates to get a comeback win quite like the one on Wednesday night inside the Prudential Center. It was bonkers in there. Right. Bonkers. And it was dead at halftime. Down UConn 14 at the half. A, yeah, UConn's up 14 at the half. Guys, they were clicking. Clicking because they were clicking because they were getting transition buckets. Mm -hmm. And they, they were getting trailing threes between Alex Caravan and Jordan Hawkins, who you can't leave open. But just in the second half, it's like this magic effect that we saw last year with St. Peter's was unleashed from Seton Hall. And Casey and Defo's at the forefront of that. He, his March legend, it, it was transpiring. Think about a guy who's had more effect on two programs in the same state right. in college basketball like this guy has. Mm. He defended his tail yeah. off. Kadari Richmond, when he decides to turn it on, he's a really good player. And he turned it on in this game. And UConn has a guard problem. They really do. They they don't have that killer guard that can put the game away. And I think they felt that late. They've got to figure things out. They've got Butler on Sunday. That's an opportunity for them to figure things out. But for Seton Hall, it's a huge win. It gets them in the bubble conversation. And now they ride momentum. Winners of four straight. They're doing it with defense. They're last in scoring offense in the Big East. They're last in three-point field goal percentage in the Big East. They're one of the last place teams in field goal percentage overall, but they take it from you. They've got this New Jersey toughness that seems to reverberate <laughs> with Rutgers as well. And last night they took it from Connecticut. UConn could not put it away. And for UConn guys, here's my thought on them. They have nine wins, nine wins by at least 20 points this year. Mm -hmm. Close games. Not great. Not great for that team. Not great. Right. No. So why don't they just win by 20 then? That's what I don't understand. <laughs> like, if you know that, like, why not just win every game by 20? It right. It doesn't make any You're sense. You're front runners. Uh, so that. Xavier loses at DePaul last night, John, as well, um, who Xavier was obviously undefeated in the conference. Uh, we talked about it the last show we did, though. Their schedule is th – this isn't a knock. It's just reality. Like, their schedule is front-loaded where they play all the best teams at home, and it's going to get interesting uh, at, at, towards the tail end of their, their Big East run here as they have to go on the road against some of the better teams. How how would you handicap the Big East now? Because this conference, uh, you know, obviously is is great every year, but Jay Wright is, has had the, the reign of Jay Wright and has string, had a stranglehold on the conference. Now he's stepped out of the picture. It feels like an absolute free-for-all as we sit here today. I mean, five, six different teams could win this thing. How do you, being more of a Big East guy than Tate and I, how would you handicap it now as, as we sit here today? Well, here's how I would handicap it first off. How about this, guys? As we talk today, the best, best conference, the best coaching jobs done in this conference have been by Shaka Smart, mm -hmm. Cooley, and Sean Miller. Mm -hmm. And if what if I had told you that two or three years ago? Yeah. That, yeah, this year, in 2022-23 in the Big East, the best coaching jobs are going to be done two of them by Shaka Smart and Sean Miller. You would have said, where have you been? <laughs> right. What planet are you on? What are you talking about? Uh, you know, th that's what we're watching here. Now, where the Big East has the bigger issues is that Georgetown is rock bottom. Mm -hmm. Georgetown can never be this bad, should never be this bad. It's unfortunate. And it's rough. They need to look themselves in the mirror and, and make some necessary changes. Hire, hire Rick Pitino is what you're saying. Right. Hire Rick Pitino. Hire yeah. someone. Yeah. <laughs> that's the Twitter train. I mean, that's the train. Jay Will. On. I think Jay Williams could do yeah, it. Yeah. Jay, Jay Williams. Right. Yeah. Hire him. The, the Jay Williams <laughs> stuff. Like, the Jay Williams stuff. What, what are you doing? Like, come on. I'm not trying to call out Jay Will, but, but I'm guessing this is the only thing I'll ever call Jay Will on out on. Come on, Jay Will. No, you're right. better than that. This, right. You're not. This is a safe space, John. You can call it Jay Will here. Don't worry. <laughs> right. we, uh, we have said far worse. We will be in concert. Yeah. <laughs> but I like to hear that. I'll tell you what. Um, 
to me, how I would handicap it, to how I would forecast it, I think that Creighton yes. ends up making the stretch run in this league yes. and ends up reminding us why ends up reminding us why they were picked one. Right answer. That's the right that's answer, my, Jen. That's my gut. That's my gut. They're they're eleven and eight, but guys, they're finding it. I mean, mm-hmm. in the win earlier this week. They had seven uh, at Butler. They had seven players between eight and 12 points. They're just incredibly balanced. Mm-hmm. They don't require one guy to go for 20 or one guy to go for 18. It could be Shireman one night. It could be Trey Alexander the next. It could be Ark Kaluma the next. I think we all, I think not all of us, but I think a lot of people sold out on Creighton when Kalkbrenner goes down. They go on a losing spell, a losing spell that nobody thought would be imaginable for this team. But I really like their upside, and I think they're going to be able to put them together. And one thing you've always learned about Greg McDermott teams is they get better as the year goes on. So mm-hmm. for me, Creighton reminds us why they're one here. I think they're going to go on a stretch run, and I think they could end up winning the Big East tournament. I think Marquette is legit. Right. I mean, I, I don't think this is last year where they fell off. Chaka Smart took his team on a retreat in the fall. He pulled in his players last spring and said, what needs to change? You know, we can't just win seven in a row and then fall off. They lost six their last nine games last year. At one point, at this time last year, we all thought Marquette could win a tournament game, if not two. Mm -hmm. They are, they're legit. And Shaka Smart at Marquette feels like the perfect fit. They're 15 and five. They're seven and two in the Big East. What a year that they're having. Tyler Kolick has been one of the best point guards in college basketball. And their offense is, their offense is top five in Kempom. So they're for real. Providence is tough. And I have some concerns with their guard play at times, but they're a tough team. To me, Xavier, I worry about them away from home Mm -hmm. because defensively, they're just not all together there. They Mm -hmm. just aren't. They're a really good offensive team. The Big East is a fun league in terms of offense this year. Some of these teams have to figure out who they are on the defensive end of the floor. But I'll tell you what, guys, a storyline to monitor. The Big East tournament, let's face it, It's been the Villanova Invitational for the better part of the last decade. A Midwest team since this league reconfigured has never won the Big East tournament. Is this the year that we see Xavier or Marquette or somebody like, or Creighton? Creighton Creighton has been the bridesmaid forever. They've made four Big East tournament championship games out of nine. Mm. It's the fifth out of 10, the magical moment. That's the script I'm picking. Or does Butler get healthy and go on a run? I don't know. Could happen. Could happen. We'll see. Um, <laughs> Creighton's the right answer, though, John. I'm, I'm glad you love Creighton as much as we do because we saw Creighton in Maui, and uh, it's it's kind of been a running joke on our show that every time Creighton loses, we just uh, we move the <laughs> goalposts and we say, "Yeah, but they're the best eight loss team in the country." Right. Yeah, but they, like, and we'll find cons- me a better one. Yeah, find me a better nine loss. Like as right. they continue to lose, we'll just keep saying that. Mm-hmm. Um, what what was Cockburn? Did he have mono? Was that it? Like what he was? What what did a, what, what what was wrong with him? That that's basically that's basically what it was. It, what it was the yeah, kissing he just disease had, and, he's out there he, kissing smooching, right. smooching sam too much. Yeah. <laughs> you know how much there's lingering effects there too yeah, you know i know when you have when you have that it can sideline you for a couple of games that's what happened with call brenner and and it took some real time for him to get freshened back up and get back in the equation and let's face it he's their most valuable player I mean, he protects the rim. Right. He makes things happen around the rim. If he's not blocking shots, he's altering them. And guys, I haven't even thought that since he's come back, he's fully been himself. Mm-hmm. I thought against UConn, I was seeing him do things that I just I was surprised by. He didn't look, his durability factor hasn't been exactly the same, but he has come back and they've gotten on a roll here now. And I think they're, they're in a very good place. And I, I think they're just starting. So the big East title race is going to be fascinating because Creighton swallowed some lumps early, but their schedule, it allows for them to really go on a run here. And I think that run is going to happen. Who do you, who do you think is going to win the big East coach of the year? Because we have a good race. We have Shaka smart at Marquette. We have Sean Miller at Xavier. I yeah. think that's the fascinating thing to me because I was telling Titus last show, Sean Miller is the class of the big East. But I don't know. There's something about Shaka and Marquette that they have my attention. So I wanted to hear from the expert himself. I'm with Tate. I'm with you. Right. Shaka Smart is my Big East coach of the year today. Love that. And I think he ends up winning it. His team was picked to finish ninth in the Big East. Right. You lose, you lose Justin Lewis. You gain no 
portal splashes. Mm -hmm. They didn't do anything in the transfer portal. Their right. freshman class was fine. You know how they're doing it? What a concept in college basketball. Player development. <laughs> we love it. Player development. Marquette feels like Marquette again. Right. They're they're tough. They've got a killer instinct. Cam Jones has grown leaps and bounds. Mm. Tyler Kolek has grown leaps and bounds. That's as good of a backcourt as you're going to find in the Big East. And then you look at Omax Prosper and Oso Igadaro and David Joplin. They don't have this back-to-the-basket traditional five-man. Igadaro tries to fill that role, but he's not like what Kalkbrenner and Joel Soriano at St. John's and Sonogo can do. Right. But what, he's, what he does is it follows what Shaka Smart wants. He wants to mobilize his bigs. Shaka Smart didn't forget how to coach at Texas. <laughs> it just didn't end up fitting. It's and Texas. Frankly, nobody nobody, yeah, nobody, can nobody fits, nobody Texas. fits Texas. <laughs> Not even yeah, the alums. There's a reason why we're always yeah. asking, are they back? When we're asking you, are, are you back? It means that you never have a true fit form. And, and for me, um, I think Shaka Smart at Marquette back in his home state of Wisconsin, where he grew up, it just feels right. The Golden Eagles haven't won an NCAA tournament game in a decade, guys. That's got to change. Wow. wow. I didn't realize that. It's been that long? 2012. But that was the... Buzz Williams. Wow, <laughs> dude, we're getting too old. Man. I know. Like this is like I was. If you if you would have asked me, I would have said like three years ago, four years ago, something like that. I saw John Wall talking about his recruitment, like it was you know David Thompson talking about his recruitment. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how? Yeah, what, right. what, what, where, where do we live? What time is it? <laughs> um, John, what what else in, in college basketball gets you going outside the Big East? What 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 is it that? Because uh, because we we're looking for storylines on this show. Obviously, Zach Eady has just cannibalized all like he's he's just swallowed I, I guess is a better way to put it just like everything he's ruined the wooden he's ruined he's ruined college yeah. basketball zach right. Eady has ruined right. college basketball right. i agree right, right the piece um, right the piece <laughs> aggregate me please <laughs> um so like the, the the national player of the year race is over um i guess like kentucky being back does that do it for you like the the ebbs and mm. flows of kentucky what, what is it that you have your eye on that you're like this is this is uh you know super interesting to me here in uh mid to late january and and around the country the fact that the best freshman and the best all-around talent in college basketball is playing in Tuscaloosa, mm -hmm. that's that's interesting to me. Right. Brandon Miller is beyond his years mature, too. He's got a great circle of people. He is superb to watch. And that really fascinates me. And I think in... The SEC this year, collectively, that SEC title race and, and the way that the SEC performs in March will be really interesting because, like, there's moments where I'm buying Tennessee, uh -huh. but, guys, I don't I don't know if I trust them. I just – I don't trust them offensively. <laughs> um, as good as they can be sometimes is as, is as rough as they can be to watch on the other end. Mm. What happened to Arkansas? Like, that now intrigues me. Are they just going to fall off a cliff? Mm -hmm. Or will Musbus get them back on? I mean, keep in mind – Arkansas has gone to back-to-back -back elite eights. And if you would have told us in early December, they'd be on track for that again. We would have said, yeah, that's probably the case, but they're one in five in the SEC. It's crazy. The big 12 intrigues me. Mm. The big 12 is ridiculous. <laughs> Half of the big 12's league games have been decided by six points or less. Yeah. It's 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 nuts. I I have one controversial opinion. I shouldn't even say this, but this say is it. we're in the business of controversy. Right. Um. The Big Twelve is by far the best league in the country. I'm not going to say it's not, but the 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 like th this is the time of year where the fawning over the Big Twelve, because it's just like a it's like a cyclical thing of like you, they they all play each other and it's all fun games. So that I I don't know. Like everyone talks about the Big Twelve, like they they might have the ten best teams in the country. <laughs> um. I don't. I, I shouldn't have even said that, John. I, I apologize well, I, because I don't want to. I don't. But it just like it's it like Texas Tech is not that good anymore. Like Texas Tech, let's not no, pretend no, that no. Texas Tech is like a a good team. And but Baylor beating them was a good but win. Baylor, yeah, but Baylor beating. You know what I mean? It's like like the the way the way we talk about the Big Twelve is like I, I'm counting. I'm calling on like one person in the national media to step up and say like it's definitely the best conference. It is not like mm -hmm. you know th this is not a ten bid league. Let's not say that. Let's not like get no, excited not. about a ten bid league here. You know. Here's the interesting thing. The reason why the Big 12 has developed that perception is because they've accounted for two for the last two national right, championships. Right. 
and they've had a team in the championship game now the last three years. They've had a team in the Final Four every year since 2018. In other words, when you have that seat at the big boy table, Mm -hmm. you're always going to be treated with some respect. And I do think that the Big Ten is the deepest conference in college basketball. Thank you, John. I do. I really do. I, I, I fully believe that. It's a legit 12 deep, if not 13 on some nights. I mean, in a world where Nebraska's beating Ohio State. Wait, what? Sorry. <laughs> what? Yeah. what world is that? I know. That, did that yeah. happen? It didn't. It never happened. <laughs> not in this uh, universe. <laughs> yeah, no, it it. it We've stopped acknowledging it. I, I I really didn't know my lane. You told me that I knew what I was going to be talking about on the show. I, I know nothing. John, um, I thought John was the most lovable guy in college yeah, basketball. What yeah. the hell is this? Yeah. It quickly quickly ruining my stock of getting a, a free Canes order in Columbus. That's not going to happen anymore. Uh, here's the thing, though. The, the, to me, the reason why the Big Ten isn't getting talked about more is because now we've gotten to that point. Like Every time I – this is getting annoying. Every time I send a tweet about the Big Ten, like the second response is, call me in March. Exactly. Call me in March. Yeah. 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 Win okay, a real ring. Okay. Win a real ring. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm not calling you in March. And don't give me your number. <laughs> You're not getting a phone call from me. And shut up. Go drink a glass of water. John Go drink a glass is not of calling water. you. He's not and, calling and, yeah, you. You're, you're not getting a phone call from me and <laughs> pipe down. Okay. Because you know what? Yes. Daddy Brad, Daddy Brad Underwood said it. The way that you make a tournament run is you keep getting in the NCAA tournament. Right. Yeah. So to, to Dale in Omaha, who's upset about the big 10, not making the March run. I say to you, Dale, calm yourself down. Okay. Dale. And keep that pencil sharpened because it's coming. Okay. Well, I, right. I, I, I the Big Ten is going to be fine. The Big Ten is is deep. It's the deepest conference in college basketball. The problem is we don't win national titles, and that's mm. when, when people say make a run in March, they mean win a national title. Because if right. if if you have a brain, you would acknowledge that the Big Ten is we, we've sent seven programs to the national title game, but mm. like, that, that's people not forget. good enough. You know, people forget. But that's not good enough, Tate. Right. So, like, what what run are you talking about? You're talking about winning the national championship. Yeah, like win a national win championship. Win a real ring. Win a real ring. Um, but the the what what screwed us perception wise was that COVID year in 2021 mm. when we're we're playing so. uh, in Indiana. Um, that was you know, Illinois' year. That was it supposed was Ill, to be you know Illinois like year. and and rightfully so. But also, I thought we were all I thought we all agreed as a college basketball community to look back on that and say it was a Mickey Mouse tournament and it doesn't count and, mm. it, and none of that matters. No, but for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, I it's did. like LeBron's what I title said. in the bubble. It's like LeBron's title in the bubble. Yes, Mickey Mouse I mean, doesn't count. Yeah, once once LeBron won it. Like, if the Heat had won it, we'd be like, yeah, you know. <laughs> but once LeBron won it, it's like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, Add it Jordan. to the resume. Add it to the resume. Jordan. Um, yeah. and it's well, right. Okay, so that that is that is the monkey on the Big Ten's back, though. You have to win a national title. Um, and and you saying yes. you saying the conference is deep. You saying I actually agree with you. Um, and this isn't even just me being a Big Ten homer. I think that people shit on the Big Ten so much that we as a conference are in a good position heading into March because the expectations are so low. Um, that I, I, I actually think we could get like three teams in the sweet 16, which people will be shocked by like Illinois is better than people realize Indiana. Everyone pretended like their, their season's over. I don't think it is. Um, but, but John, we, the conference has to win a national title as we sit here today. It's Purdue and Purdue alone. Right. Is that, is that how you see it? Like we don't, we don't think Illinois or Indiana or Illinois is the best can... dark, dark horse. I think, I think Illinois is the team outside of Purdue. Like Rutgers, yeah. Rutgers isn't a national title good, John, are they? No. They're not. Yeah. They're not. But you, but you know what? Right now, to me, if you're asking me who's national title good, I do push back on when people are like, yeah, it could be any of like 15 to 20 teams. The longer yeah. that this goes, guys, the more I get to like, I think it's like five to six teams. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For me. So for me, those teams are Houston, mm-hmm. Kansas. Alabama is there. Agreed. Purdue, UCLA. Yep. After that, yep. I'd be curious to know where you go because Gonzaga, I'm not sold on. Texas's offense sometimes disappears in the big spot. Yep. Virginia, yep. Virginia, based on experience balance, I could see someone making the case. By the way, another intriguing AC uh, college basketball storyline the ACC's better. 
than everybody thought it would be. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, eight eight teams can win the conference. Yeah, that's crazy. That's good parody. There's going to be a race there. And I'm intrigued to see if Carolina hits this different gear again. Like, does that happen twice? Does lightning strike twice? Mm -hmm. And then I think we have to go back to the well here. Like, how does John Shire's first year end? How, what is the end result of this story? And do they get fully healthy? And do we finally see the Derek Whitehead that they've been looking for? So that's fascinating to me as well. But I think in college basketball, you've got about five or six legit national title contenders. When it comes to the Sweet 16, I would guarantee this now. You can all takes expose me. You will see in the NCAA tournament a 14 seed or worse be in the Sweet 16. Wow. Wow. The wow. It's going to wow. happen again. Oral Roberts, St. Peter's. College of Charleston. College of Charleston. A 15 seated College of Charleston. <laughs> With one loss. <laughs> who's 30, yeah, one, one loss of 37 and one, 15 seed. Right. Because they, right. they have zero quality wins. <laughs> right. And Purdue's the two seed. Yeah. yeah, right. Well, that would be. Man, that would. Then, then you know what? If that happens, then I'm going to have to call that guy in Omaha. I, I'm you have to call Dale. Yeah. yeah. So if, if Purdue loses in the first round, I'll just be placing phone calls the entire day. Just log off, John. Just like, just go, go on vacation. Yep, that'll or be something. the end right, of me. Right. People yeah. um, forget. Yep. I, I, I think Carolina, and I'm not just saying this to make Tate feel better, uh, but, but Carolina is, as, as long as Carolina is, their season is not over. They're in the mix because of last year, right. because of the talent they have, and and we've seen them. But the problem I think with Carolina is that they all, every single player and coach in that locker room has the exact same mindset that they're like, we can flip this switch whenever we want. And I don't know if that's a yeah. great mindset to have. But they're they're playing better basketball than I think most of the country realizes because they came out of the gate not great, Tate. Right, as you know. Um, but every game they've lost is pretty much Baycott related. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like Carolina is a dark horse to like put it together, right. and suddenly they're ranked like 19. Caleb and, and Caleb Love like, could not second. shoot worse than he is right now. Like, yeah, if you look at the last 10 games, you'll never see percentages like this. So that is the perfect time to buy the dip. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. If, if you're someone that believes that it will bounce back the other way, now what, is the time. What about Arizona? Where are you out on Arizona, Ooh. John? Are you done with Arizona? I I am personally. I I'm I'm done with Arizona as a national title threat. Uh, I I don't trust Kirk Creesa anymore, but. Mm. So Arizona to me is the restaurant that I've had five trips to <laughs> and three and a half of them have been good. Okay. <laughs> I had a bad night at, at one point might've drank a little too much tequila at the restaurant. <laughs> and as a, as a result, then the food got impacted. But <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm going to give it a sixth try because the first time I went, I fell in love with the place. Yeah. Right. That's, that's Arizona. Arizona is the restaurant that's had a couple of bad nights, but you you really like the staff there, and you're going to you believe in give it another shot. You yeah. believe in I them. still I still believe in them. You know why? The Wildcats' best is good enough to beat the best in the country. Oh, absolutely. Mm. That's why. Absolutely. That's why I'm still in on Arizona. As much as Kirk Reese and Courtney Ramey can be frustrating, I trust Tommy Lloyd, who's won a lot more than he's lost. And at the end of the day, Azulis Tubelis and Omar Ballo are a nightmare matchup, especially for teams that aren't as familiar with them, teams that don't know them or haven't seen them before. So I, I think the other thing is, like, Pele Larson can't just disappear. A mm-hmm. guy that athletic on the wing can't right. just score two or three points a game. He's got to be a guy that's given them 10 to 14 points. So for me, they're such a dangerous team. And I can't get out on that because I I do like their talent. One flaw with Arizona, though, guys, it's not like Tommy Lloyd has anywhere he can go on his bench to find someone who can really step up and be a sixth or seventh man in a major, major way. But I'm not out on the Wildcats. I'm I'm not out quite yet. I'm going to give that restaurant another spin. Mm. If you watched watched Arizona and, like, layup lines – you would think Larson's their best player. And I told if if you watch Arizona and layup lines and I said there's one guy out there that's that's probably going to be a first team all-American, certainly second team at the worst. Who is it? You'd be like it's probably the uh the guy who's like 6'6 and jacked out of his mind and and has a yes. smooth looking shirt, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you watch the games and you're like what happened to that guy that I saw <laughs> that was where is this guy? And and yeah, Larson is so frustrated. That's I don't I don't I just don't I agree with you that Arizona at their best, uh, at, when Arizona's rolling, they look like the best team in the country. We saw it in Maui. We were like, this is the best team in college basketball, I think. But 
you have to do that six times, and I don't trust that they're going to bring that six times in a row. And, and they could be up eighteen tournament. in a tournament game and lose that game. Yeah, right. We yeah. saw that in Maui. They would get up big, and they're almost like an NBA team. They get complacent. Kirk Creases starts yes. turning the ball over, and then all of a sudden, college basketball a run happens, and boom, it's a it's a game, and they don't want to play it anymore. But UCLA goes to Arizona this weekend on Saturday. Yeah, circle that game. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. Circled. I just, I just circled. circled it. It's circled. I just Locked circled in. it. Uh, anything else, Tate? High level. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I have anything else. I, I want to say this, John. This is a pleasure. Uh, we we have. I met you one time, um, and at the Big East tournament uh, last year, and uh, the the reason you're so lovable, and and I hope again, I I hope I'm not like you know embarrassing you too much here, but uh, we we were at a bar in uh, what was it? Oscar Wilde was at the bar yeah. in in Manhattan. Yeah, Jim, that was you were, it. yeah. Uh, Raff is holding court like he always does. Like Bill, Bill Raftery and Bob Huggins, I've said, are the two people in college basketball that can walk into a bar and just sit down on a bar stool, not say a word to anybody, and just like wait 10 minutes. Right. And they got a crowd of like 30 mm -hmm. people around them. It's like, like a media scrum. Yeah, it's just everybody wants to hear it. Everyone's mm -hmm. leaning in, hearing what they got to say. Right. Um, and the Fanta shows up, and uh, I, I, I talked to him for like five minutes. He was, I think you're on your way out, John. <laughs> and uh you're like john fanta good to meet you and i was like hey man i i you know it's good to finally you know meet face to face and all that and then you walked out of the bar by yourself to go back to the hotel and it was like again this isn't an insult this is the only reference i could think of it was lloyd christmas walking out of the bar in dumb and dumber when he said we landed on the moon you know and he's not talking to anybody he just throws his arms in the air i watched you walk out on a street mm -hmm. of manhattan and just yell big east tournament and pump your fist in the air <laughs> <laughs> and i was like this guy loves he loves college it. basketball right to an extent that I've never seen, and like it fired me up. I, that immediately sold me on this man. Like I, right. I've, I've been, I, you know, this is I, not an act. This is this pure. Is, yeah, this, this is guy, pure love, and we love the game, and we love, we love seeing you love it, and it just, it, it's, it's the best. It was it a really warm is, feeling. Man. It, 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 do you get any hate from anybody? I mean, you said people <laughs> chirped you at the Big Ten. Is there like, do, do you feel hate from anybody? Like, how have you done this? Because this is, this is all I like. Every time I log on, it's just like you're wrong, and here's why. That's my mm. entire Twitter experience. Mm. Is, do you experience that? Because it feels like you're just the most beloved guy ever, dude. I appreciate that. It's very humbling. <laughs> I don't know if I've gotten... I mean, I get hate here and there. Uh, DePaul fans gave me hate for not loving their win over Xavier enough, I guess. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but no, honestly, I mean, I love this sport. And yeah. I think I think there's two things you can control in life. Here's life lessons with Titus and Tate. Love that. There's two things you, There's two things you can control in life. How hard you work and what kind of person are you mm -hmm. while you're doing it? If, if you're, nobody wants to work with an ass. So uh, that was something that I learned as an intern with Fox Sports after my junior year of college. One of the coordinating producers of studio, the first day on the internship, he looked at me in his office and he said, you know, remember this, nobody wants to work with a jerk. Mm -hmm. And you know, you guys are on Team Fox Sports. I'm a part of the Fox Sports family. Right. We work with a lot of we work with a lot of first class people. And I'm not just saying that. People that get it, but people that as hard as they work, they manage to be really down to earth, humble humans for how accomplished they are in their careers. And so from from the time I was an intern in Los Angeles, uh working working for Fox and doing some behind the scenes stuff. You know, you quickly realize just how many great people we have both in front of and behind the cameras. And uh, for me, my parents always said, you know, find find what you're good at and be the best at it. And I just, I always think to myself, no matter what game we're covering, no matter what game we're talking about, no matter what team we're talking about, there is someone out there listening or watching that treats this like the passion it is. Yeah, and, life and or death. We have to, we have to match, if not exceed that, because we owe it to those folks. And the game of college basketball has given me a lot of thrills. I was a student at Seton Hall when I covered my first Final Four. My first Final Four was 2016, Chris Jenkins in Houston. And I remember looking around. And if that doesn't make you say, I'm going to love this forever, mm. I felt like uh, that that was like a marriage with college basketball being installed for me. And I'll never forget that. And I tell myself every day, this beats working because this <laughs> sport is the best. Mm. You're the best too, John. We, yeah, we, we do love, love you. I, we, we, our, our role in the uh, college basketball universe is just to be snarky assholes that, you know, just like <laughs> make jokes about everything. And to have a guy like you kind of counterbalance that and be a force for good. And just not to say that, you know, you're, you're not afraid to, uh, 
you know, make a joke here and there, obviously. But, uh, you know, it, it is it is refreshing, I, I think, just as a consumer of media, uh, honestly, like not even, um, you know, just I because I, 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 I watch your stuff and I listen to you and I, I it's it's just refreshing to have a guy like you that uh, uh, just just the, genuinely loves it. Yeah, and, it doesn't and, feel and like it's you infectious. care about what your take is. And if your take is right, it feels yeah. like you care because you love it. And, and you're that's wrong. what we, and, we and, love. And, it and when you're yeah. wrong, instead of fighting everybody, you're just smiling. And you're right. like, you're like, Dale, I'm not going to call you. Yeah, I'm not going to call you. But... <laughs> I will not call you. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, <laughs> Hey, and if you're wrong, you're wrong. I'm okay. I've been wrong on plenty of things, yeah. and I'll be wrong on many more things. Right. But it's been a, it's been a pleasure to join you guys for the first time, and I appreciate you having me. This will not be the last time, John. Right. I promise you that. One hundred percent. All right, John Fanta. Thank you so much, dude. Thanks, Fanta. Thanks, Titus and Tate. All right, thank you to John Fanta. Uh, he's the best. He's he's just as as perfect as I pictured him in my dream state. Right. So, I, yeah. uh, whenever I see Fanta like on any platform, just talking about college basketball, it gets me excited. Yeah. I get a little bit of a smile and I just get a little bit of warmth in my heart. I, so I do want to call out Jim though. When he, when Fanta was talking about all the great people at Fox and you know, how hard they work and all this sort of thing, right. Jim about broke his neck. He was not in his head so long, like no, so hard just going, yes, yes, John continue to pat me. I don't think he was talking about you, Jim. I don't think he, I think I he was saluted talking him. About- <laughs> What, what was he Emmy nominated producer Jim Cunningham? Yeah, Twice. Well, he was talking about the Twice. guys. <laughs> he was talking about the people behind the scenes, Jim. And unfortunately, you were very much right. in front of the scenes. Our director Chris show. working yeah. hard, yeah. Tyler working hard. Yeah, right there. yeah. The I rest mean, of the crew. He wasn't right. talking about you. Not Jim, you, Jim. So. Not fine. you, Jim. Uh, you want to do some frauds? I'm gonna cut that part I, anyway. He's, he's, he's <laughs> gonna take that out. Um, I'm ready for frauds. You know, I'm ready for frauds. It's Friday, even though it's not, but I'm it's, already there. It's, it doesn't matter. For right. Friday, Friday, fraud, on my fraud mind. Friday is a state of mind. We could do this on a Monday, and, right. it's, uh, and if we're talking frauds, it's Friday. Um, so someone in the someone in my DMs, uh, <laughs> some people are Jay Williams voice. Some, great, a lot great of people start, are asking. <laughs> great start to fraud Friday. A lot of people are asking. Uh, no, I, I've been called out. Um, someone has said that the fraud power rankings have lost their way. They said that, uh, oh no, once upon a time, this segment was, um, it, it, it called out the frauds. It called it like, if you remember Tate, like we, we first did it with, uh, doc rivers and, and Paul George and Kawhi Leonard <laughs> and, uh, who's, who's responsible for the Clippers sneaking. But then when I did it for the college teams, it was me calling out Houston, mm. the 2021 Houston team. And I would, I would constantly point out who the frauds are. Um, which teams and players and coaches and all that. And someone said, get back to that. Like, what's going on? Like, why is why is UConn not on the fraud power rankings? How is Arkansas not on the fraud power rankings? Ohio State, what's going on? And uh, I, I, to that, I say it is true. We, we we did used to do it that way. We, we have lost our way a little bit, you know? It's getting a little more eccentric with the picks. Too many committees. Yeah, too many committees. <laughs> you know how these government organizations, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen. Um but also what happened is people people are too sensitive, you know? And I, mm. I was calling out teams and, and people were taking it the wrong way. And, aggregating. And getting, aggregating. And getting, right. Retweeting. You know, dare I say butt hurt? Is that a word the mm. kids still use? Mm. Uh, and so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know actually. Actually, it's, it feels like I guess I used that. I was like, I, that, that didn't feel right. That feels very like twenty thirteen. Right. It did not feel right. twenty twenty three. Um but yeah, people are too sensitive. So uh I just wanted to say that out of the gate. But that also is a good segue to number five on the fraud power rankings these days, because number five on for Fraud Friday this week is kids these days, mm. just in general, kids these days, the, 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 the youth. The, the league is not in good hands. The league is not in good hands. Okay. Because uh, I'm sure you saw this video, Tate, that, uh, was, <laughs> that went viral, um, was posted on Monday by an account called Courtside Films, uh, got 14, 15, <laughs> something like that million views and, and, and climbing. Mm. of third graders in an AAU basketball game uh just I, I don't know how to describe it to listeners uh <laughs> if you didn't see the video if you never acted a fool yeah to, if you never said AAU culture when someone says it I think that video sums it up pretty perfectly but they're third graders that's why it's hilarious they're a third grade the th- <laughs> let's go let's go <laughs> Flexing and slapping their bicep. So too small. Too small. Too small. Too small. There's a video of a kid that's three foot eleven <laughs> right. saying too small right. to a guy guarding him. Right. Um. And 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 baby I just, baby Kennedy Meeks. He's just getting buckets. I just want to say, like, as a as a a guy who is aged out of the eighteen to thirty four <laughs> year old demographic, I'm now in my third demographic, Tate. Mm. I'm I've gone from a child to eighteen thirty four. I'm officially an old man, being thirty five years old. Right. Um, I, I, I feel like I have to say it, kids these days. 
they're 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 fraudulent. They're like my generation would never. We we never would have done this. This the, is the funniest part to me in all this discourse that's happening about you know these not really necessarily these kids specifically, but I saw Austin Rivers uh, came out. And he had this two minute diatribe, which kind of you know confirms a lot of things that you and I talk about on the show, talking about the highlight culture and guys don't even watch full games yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And then you you see all this. And I saw a lot of NBA players quote tweeting the third graders with the SMH smack my face, you know, <laughs> like, look at this, like, look at, look at how horrible this is. And then I'm watching the third graders and I'm thinking to myself, this kid that just hit that step back three, who does he remind me of? Austin Rivers, <laughs> you know, it was like, funny. Like, and then like Russell Westbrook's like SMH, you know, and you're like, who did that arrow shot uh, look yeah, like? Yeah, or who yeah. did the flex look like? I'm like, Russell Westbrook, you know, it was a very... It was this very weird experience where you're like, I agree with you, but also it's, it's you did the, this. It's the boomers <laughs> complaining about millennials getting participation trophies. Right. And then you're like, who do you think was giving us right. the participation trophies? You think right. we were giving them to ourselves? Right. You were the ones giving them. Right. Like, I remember Austin Rivers' highlight tape. It was amazing, you know? But yeah. Austin Rivers, one of the highlights was that he was talking to the entire crowd as he was doing it. Basically, you know? that, so Austin was, Rivers made a lot of great points, but then also... I think we're, we're his point of view, but he, he he massaged it and tried to make it seem like he was speaking for basketball as a whole. Right. But really what his point of view was, was like, I, I'm, I was good in high school. And now I have to, like, if you were watching highlight tapes in high school, it was only good players. That got to do this. He's basically like, it's stolen valor that everyone right. gets a mixtape. Right. Like, I had to earn my mixtape. He's saying, he put your warm-up your... back on. Yeah, he's Brad Calipari, earn not given. Right. Um, my my father has never helped me get anything in this in this life. I had to earn it all myself. No one knows my father's name. Um, <laughs> and he made the mixtape. and Or he it's got true. the mixtape made. They out. know Doc. They don't know Glenn. <laughs> no, it, it was, it's, it's. But the, the, the whole the whole discussion around this kids video though is uh, I don't know it's 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 because it, like people people generally are like let the kids have fun who are they hurting and I'm like yeah, I I must be 80 years old because I'm like this is this is insane could you imagine you can watch this and say that this yeah this is cool this is actually good imagine your not a kid problem. playing that team like imagine that little kid makes a layup he's doing too small and he's like they're not cuss words obviously that is saying but it has like the implicit I. You know, it's like <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I saw people commenting life. on this thing that said uh, they're just gassing each other up. They're not taunting the other team. And I'm like, <laughs> if that's not taunting the other team, if we're, if, are you serious? Like, what what would it take to be taunted if that's not taunted? I think my favorite part was when the the big kid first goes to the free throw line and the the little kid that hits the three, he like didn't see his flex. He didn't see the flex, and, and then he goes back to him. He taps in to make sure he sees the flex the second time. One guy said the little kid. Well, I had a handful of people say, right. but uh, one guy in particular, I, I wish I would have I could call him out by name, but he said that this is me and Greg Oden in AAU. <laughs> <laughs> he called out the he called out the little white dude as as being me, and to that guy. I think I replied to him, but uh, I, 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 I want to, I want to, I want to reply to him again, and I want everyone to know uh, that that white, the white kid flexing. Uh -huh. First of all, great hype man. Mm. Uh, Kirk Creesa loves that kid. Looking out for his buddy, getting his buddy going, you know. Right. Um, but also, he did have one shot in the highlight reel, got the net stuck. Oh, it was, it was Nothing wet. It was wet. Nothing but net. So like, yeah. I, and then he held it after. Yeah. So I mean, like, if you're saying that I'm that kid. You know, guilty as charged. No, he, was, he was pretty nice. He gave me Steve Blake vibes. Like when I saw this little kid, I was like, future Steve Blake, sign him up. <laughs> Who's filming these kids? Why is there courtside films at this game? Yeah, well, there there was a there was a an extended <laughs> cut that I saw. It pans to the to the uh bench and you know who's coaching him is T Jass. He's their <laughs> head yeah. coach. Yeah. The greatest. <laughs> Yeah, do you think T Jazz is the influence here? Is that is that the problem, Jim? Partially. I mean the NBA. I don't know if these kids follow T Jazz or the NBA, but by the way, TJS pulled back the curtain, let us know that that one video took him 460 times. Right, yeah. Did he really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, oh, he, he, he shows all that, the edits. I would have thrown I, him I on the... I sent it to you guys. Oh, my God, did he? And he shows all the, all the cuts. And, and it basically was like the whole... He was like basically trying to do a motivational video. He's like, it's not... A lot of people think this is easy. I just Everyone show up to the court. Everyone thinks I did it the first time, which right. I did. I thought, I thought were every all single one shot take. was first I thought he day. never yeah, missed. I thought, I thought that was the whole bit, that he's never missed. Mm -hmm. I thought the show First Take was named after T-Shirt. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. First Take right. Jazz. It's not? Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Right. Kids these days. Well, he's, yeah. That's why he's I'm excited. I'm excited for the big kid, uh, number seven, who wears like a, a karate headband. Yeah, Dude. he's wearing like the Daniel Um, He's I'm, sick. 
I'm excited for him to opt out of AAU games. <laughs> yeah. Eighth grade. Grade. <laughs> no, in third grade. He's like, I'm not. I, I had a big game last game. The scouts are the scouts are high on me. I'm opted out. Coach. Right. Sorry. He's like future Kenny Lofton Jr. That's what I was getting the yeah, whole time. Yeah, I was like, this, this kid. Like, I'm doing shades. I'm watching this game, and I'm watching third graders, and I'm doing shades of. My my official stance on it is you're not going to have my last name and do that out there on a basketball court. But also, if someone else's kid does it, I'm like, that's pretty fun. <laughs> Honestly, if my kid was that wet, though, like as the little Steve Blake kid, I might let him get away with some of it. I'm just like, don't do the bow and arrow. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm getting yeah. like, there's certain celebrations. I'll, I like the let's go. Yeah, I, I like I don't like the flex. I'm not a flex. Guy. I picture these 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 kids. Dad is or they have Randy Marsh as a father. Right. He's teaching them the Sam Cassell right. big balls. And right. Like, right. This is like, what they're practicing. Like, grab, grab. He's like, grab <laughs> my <laughs> It's like a pageant mom, you know, it's like the kids are right, doing their dance right. and it, the, the mom's mimicking yeah. the... Amy Poehler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's Randy Marsh. <laughs> Grab your nuts, dude. Right. Oh, man. All right, moving on. Uh, number good, f- good for the kids. Number four on the fraud power rankings, The Onion. You're you're familiar with this news outlet, Tate. The Onion, mm. uh, satirical. Right. Funny. Funny. Uh, funny. They, they, uh, what's, what's an Onion head? Jim, what's your favorite Onion headline that comes to mind? I don't know. Okay. Sorry. You, you don't have any. Uh, I, I caught Jim off guard. Onion. I caught Jim off guard. Damn. Do you I have one? Read the onion. Uh, no. You don't? You're not an onion guy? Oh, I had, I, I'm sorry, dude. I had like a thousand locked and loaded for that. Like I thought, um, all right, never mind. Uh, Studies reveal babies, babies are, are dumb. Stupid. Heartbreaking. Worst man, you know, just made a great point. Right. You know, that's the, like that's that the, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Worst person you know made a good point. Friend, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the Onion. Yeah. All right, The Onion. I'm calling The Onion out because uh, Mike Rodak of AL.com, Alabama Outlet, um, mm. tweeted this the other day. This is um, word for word what he said. Nate Oltz told Crimson Tide Sports Network he spoke to former NFL linebacker Ray Lewis in the wake of Darius Miles' arrest. Quote, his daughter went to Alabama a year and a half ago. He went through a similar situation in Atlanta. He played in the NFL. He told me what he thought guys needed to hear. Tate, when I tell you I read this tweet 25 times right. saying, what, I, what I am I read missing? it that many times and you just reading it to me blew my brain. I clicked again. on the, I clicked on uh, Mike's profile and I was like, how is, cause you know, in this, in this Elon Musk era of Twitter, it's like, does the blue check mean anything? Like, who is this guy? <laughs> Are we sure that this is. Like, how am I being pranked? I, I right. said that over and over. I was right. like, how, I, there, there's right. no way this is true. Who wrote this? Yeah, I was like, The Onion is obviously fraudulent because Mike Rodak of AOL.com is writing better. He's taking their lane. Yeah, he's taking their lane. He's mm-hmm. writing funnier <laughs> tweets than, than The Onion could possibly dream up. As it turns out, this is not a joke. And this happened? Mm. This really happened? For, I, the, for those who missed it, by the way, Darius Miles uh, was was a was a basketball player on, on Alabama. Was recently arrested for capital murder, is what he's being charged with. Right. Um, he's he has since been kicked off the team. Nate Oates, for for from my perspective, handled it as well. Like you know, yeah, immediately it was like he's he's gone. Mm-hmm. Like this is heinous. <laughs> mm-hmm. We we do not obviously can you know like w- any reasonable mind would have observed this and said, what else could Nate Oates have done? You know, you know, if you want to nitpick, you'd be like, why would he bring a a guy of that character into the program, but you know, it's, you just never know with guys, you know, you, you know, so I thought they handled it. Well, it's kind of irrelevant to college basketball at this point. Let, you know, like there, he's never going to play basketball again. He might never, never step outside of a jail cell again. Who, who knows? That's not our domain. Push it over there. NATO handled it. Let's move on. You know, let's, let's celebrate this Alabama team for what they are. Right. Um, as we move <laughs> forward in the season. And then I see this Tate and, uh, what, <laughs> You brought Ray Lewis in, and then the quote is, "He went through a similar situation in Atlanta." What? What? What's the similar situation? I have no idea. Killing a guy? Like, I, is yeah, that what I you're know. saying? Like, you went through. A- <laughs> I I don't know how that story came out. I don't know how. I mean, even if that was what happened, like if if that was the resource, just let's leave that behind. Close. Can doors. you imagine being in that? Uh, you're you're Nate Oates, and you can <laughs> you can call anybody in the world to talk to your team because. I, I I'm sure the team is a little, was rattled by this. This would be this this would qualify as adversity. Uh, I would say for a basketball team, absolutely. That, that one of your teammates um, has done this, and and you know you have to now move forward and, and all that sort of thing. Um, I I could see the value in bringing someone in to talk to the team. Ray Lewis, I don't know. I don't know. We can move on. The we onion. On. The <laughs> onion. You missed this. The Tebow? onion. This is your moment. Could have talked to Tebow. Could have talked to Tebow. I was thinking K. I think you call Coach K. Mr. K. Mm-hmm. Get him on the line. 
You could have talked Tebow, yeah. Tebow like Andy's actually like makes sense. Tebow's stuff. like, listen, guys, I played with nothing but scumbags at Florida, <laughs> and here's how we did it. Yeah, and I won. And I won. Right. Here's how we did it. Brandon Paul, Paul Miller Tebow. though, thirty and ten in that game. Yeah. So I know. I don't know what maybe happened. Maybe Ray Lewis. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Maybe it was a good speech. Dude, what the hell? <laughs> it's like such like a. I, I, I feel like the, a list of like the worst people. Right. It feels like the New York Post responded to that and was like, can we credit this? Can we credit you guys and use this? You know, this is too good to pass up. Oh my God. I don't know, dude. I, I, I had to, I mean, I didn't really want to talk about it at all, but at the same time, like that, that entered, smacks you in the face that entered the so bizarre realm that I felt like if you that's don't, what, that's what this show is for is right. bizarre shit happening in college basketball. And that certainly qualifies. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, number three on the fraud power rankings this week, tobacco road, public schools, mm. including your university of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Tar Heels. Um, because John wall on Theo Pinson's podcast, <laughs> as you referenced earlier, um, said the following quote, mm. I wanted to go to Carolina. That's my dream school. Mm. Uh, John wall, a kid from Raleigh, North Carolina, number one recruit in the country. Uh, wanted to go to North Carolina. How did it not Dream happen? school. Dream school. It was, it's a done deal. I don't know if you use those words, but... No I, offer. No, done no deal. offer, but it was a done deal. Done deal. Uh, but Tyler Hansborough ruined everything because he said, <laughs> quote, I don't talk to recruits, according to John Wall. That's what John Wall said. And then after that, John Wall said, I ain't coming here. That's it. That's all it took. He said Tyler Hansborough was a hero to his. How much do you believe that? That John Wall growing up in Raleigh was like, this guy is, this guy is a hero. This guy's a guy... <laughs> I mean, there is something to be said that Tyler Hansborough was a god amongst men. One of my favorite meme pictures is the Michigan State team when they see Tyler Hansborough. You know that picture where they're all like, like they're, they're like, you know, they, they just saw Paul Bunyan or Bigfoot. You know, they're like, what in the hell? This guy's unbelievable. Um, that is how Tyler Hansborough was looked at. Obviously, I mean, he was famously or famously pulled an Escalade down Franklin Street on his back. <laughs> Everyone remembers that. Great times. Um, so he was a god. John Wall, for the people at home, John Wall, every Carolina fan wanted John Wall. Of course. Of course. Who doesn't want John Wall? Everyone knew John Wall. But John Wall, like you said, was from Raleigh. John Wall had a burglary. Like, he had a robbery, breaking and entering charge that that was, like, the reason why Duke stayed away. That was Coach K at the time. He's mm. like, he's like, we don't mess with the caliber kid of this. North Carolina was like, well, we'll see. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. What happens here? What we're did he steal? We're, 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 yeah, we're going to let things... And he didn't steal anything. He just like went to an abandoned house. You know, It wasn't even... Didn't get charged with anything. Did the key work? I think he just... I don't know what happened. I don't know All what you happened. Have to do is <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'll put my hands up. I don't know what happened. But I do know that it affected the recruitment because it was all this like, can you or can't you? But meanwhile, while everyone in the Tobacco Road triangle of trust with the NC State, North Carolina, Duke, trying to figure out if we can recruit the guy, John Calipari's in Memphis. John Calipari just had Derrick Rose. John Calipari is like, I don't care who he knows, what he's done, whatever. Can he go one four flat? Everyone's yeah. like, I've seen this man go one four yeah. flat. Yes. Yeah. He gets an offer. He's basically out of the contention. But then, like you mentioned, his mom, that all kind of came up again. With well, like that's his why staying close to home. Then there were more rumblings, like I said, that like maybe Carolina gets involved. Maybe there's a scholarship that comes in play. But at the same time, his AAU coach and his mentor hated Roy Williams, and that was a it was a big. But it's, uh, it's big not. Issue. That's why I said the public schools. It's not just Carolina that dropped mm. the, ba the ball here. It's uh, um, North Carolina State as well because well they he had said, no chance. He said no. That's not well. John Wall <laughs> read said, what he said. <laughs> John Wall said that his mom got an aneurysm and he right. wanted to stay close to home because right. his mom uh, he was worried about her health. He's from Raleigh. Mm -hmm. There is a Division One school, an ACC school, a Power Conference school, national championship, a program. national multiple time national championship right. program in Raleigh, his yes. hometown. Yes, you want to stay close to home. Mm. You want to stay close to home. That's the answer, right? Go to NC State. No, he said, basically, NC State was too close to home. <laughs> too close. So NC State, I'm also putting on the fraud power rankings because you're too you're too convenient for John Wall. Mm -hmm. It was it made too much sense. Yeah. I just imagine Sidney Lowe. That's how you fumbled that recruitment. Was that <laughs> Sidney Lowe's like sitting in his house? He's watching this little clip on Instagram, and he's just punching <laughs> he's the like... air. <laughs> he's like, "What do you mean I'm too close? <laughs> how can yeah, I be too... too close?" No, I watched that. He's like, he's like, I but wanted... it does make sense because he's like, if I was at NC State, I would never be at school. I would just be with all the homies in Raleigh. No, what, what happened was John Wall was like, I want to stay. He wanted to talk about the North Carolina recruitment because he's sitting across from Theo Pinson. So he's right. like, let's talk, let's talk Carolina. 
Every kid um, in North Carolina is like, I want to go to North Carolina. Yeah, and he's from right. North Carolina, so he's like, I, I wanted to stay close to home. And in his when he said that, he met the University <laughs> of North Carolina. Right. But then it, it, it clicked that he's like, shit, now I have to acknowledge NC mm -hmm. State. How do I get out of this? Because I was never taking NC State seriously. <laughs> There's a funny video from like, uh, like 20, I, 2011, 2012 at a Wizards game, and some guy was like, you should have gone to State. Like They yelled at John Wall, and he looks at him like, like the what? dumbest thing he's ever heard. It's hilarious. It's the best. So, John, I mean, there's a lot of people that were saying John's a liar and all this stuff because he never took an official visit. I would not be shocked. Wait, he never visited Carolina? No. He never took so, an official so, visit. Oh, so he, yeah. So, so what? That's, that's a lot of people were like, well, he never took official visit, da, da, da. I'm like, there is 100% validity to the fact that he could have been in Chapel Hill or Tyler Hansborough could have been out at a club in Raleigh. And John Wall is the number one player in 11th grade or whatever he is, went up to Tyler Hansborough, tried to get his attention, and Hansborough's a god. It's yeah. like, I don't talk to people trying to get, you know, like, get yeah, his you recruits out of here. You think Hansborough has that in him to, to do that? To, uh, to be like, get, get this get recruit out, out, of out of here? Yeah. I mean, why not? <laughs> I mean, he deserved to. National player of the year, national champion. I'm not talking to you. I mean, he had every right to do that. He had every right to do that. And, uh, I mean, it was just all I've ever wanted is John Wall to say on the record that North Carolina was his dream school. So I had that in my back pocket, and we got him. You should so thank a, you, Theo Pinson. I got, got him on the record, got him on camera. I want to see the uh, the banner hanging in the Dean Dome of the dream school list. Right. John Wall, LeBron James. Right. Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Bryant J.R. Smith. <laughs> I mean, we have everybody. Dwight Howard. Shaq. Jay Williams. <laughs> yeah, we're taking him off. <laughs> we are... <laughs> Jason Williams is off the list, um, but there yeah, you. that was uh, that that clip. I mean, good for Theo, right? That's like, good for Theo. That like Theo might Theo. have the best yeah. podcast in the NBA right now. I'm not. I'm not. That might not be biased. Like every other podcast, you can tell the agenda. Theo has no agenda. I didn't other realize Luca. Like he has a Luca agenda, but of course he plays. Did you realize that uh, Austin Rivers? That was his own podcast. Yeah, he has his own podcast. I didn't know that. Yeah, everyone has a podcast. That's yeah, in, that as play I basketball. sit here today, and I I think to myself as a consumer of basketball content. I think the one thing we need more of is Duke players with their own with shows. With media. Yeah. yeah. I think we need more Duke Preach. representation. We don't have nearly enough. We need more. Sure. Can, right. we, can we get more guys right. in front of a microphone and camera, please? For the love of God. How do I make it happen? All I know is that <laughs> Carlos Boozer on the ACC Network is one of the most ridiculous things that is happening in TV and entertainment that no one's talking about. This man wears insane stuff. He wears scarves that are like, wrapped around his neck forever he apparently is fired up to go to salt lake city for the all-star game he's like that's that's what he's looking forward to duke what, in the media what, what if christian leitner comes out and says you guys might hate me but at least i'm the only all-american at this school to not want more attention and my own show well, and all this sort of thing we know why we know why he doesn't want more attention what tax purposes oh yeah but fraud, could he fraud. Could, could he fraud. <laughs> put that on the front power? Oh, like what if what if Christian Leitner calls out all the the Duke guys that are starting? Like what is is that his way back to getting out? Because I'm I was trying to think of like players who are like iconic Duke players that you don't see on your television or your Twitter feed constantly. Like I, I it's I Christian Leitner. Like Christian Leitner, you don't see you, you know right. Hurley, he's coaching Arizona State everywhere. You see Grant Hill everywhere. Grant Hill everywhere. Right. Go down the list. Every Jay Bill is everywhere. everywhere. In my face, everywhere. And they used to be nowhere, you know? I know. It used to be Carolina guys everywhere yeah. in your yeah. face. Mike Jaminski was the, the Mike Jaminski, please, please <laughs> stop calling Carolina games. Every Carolina game I look at the announcers, it's like another enemy of North Carolina basketball is on the call. Where's Cherokee Parks? Oh, he's he's what was he calling him and Josh McRoberts are just living on a farm together and McBob's another one shooting shooting their guns at shit and McRoberts is like the my trying Moby drugs. dick because I think if I get McRoberts on the show and we talk to him McRoberts yeah. will expose the JJ Reddick propaganda that he had to live under <laughs> I, know. I know you're right yeah and Josh he would, would also tell the stories of like you know what was happening to him why was that dude? you just gotta you gotta go to his house with the with a case of like Coors Light and butter him up that way right do so you like dip I'll yeah. bring whatever yeah, right. I'll bring, bring whatever he wants <laughs> yeah the way we go. Trajan Langdon's the GM of the Pelicans. Yeah, of yeah, course. exactly. Of course, Elton Brand. Elton GM. Brand is the GM of the Sixers. Right. Yeah. John Shire is coaching Duke, I believe. Is that right. correct? Correct. Yeah. Uh, Nolan, Nolan Smith, Smith. <laughs> and Jay Williams are both going for the Georgetown job. Yeah. What What Duke player that was like an All American or national title winner or whatever that has has said, you know what? I'm going to step out of the spotlight 
No. You Jay know, Will? Well, Mike Dunleavy Jr. Mike, yeah. But you know what? He's like deep state NBA. Like when you talk to <laughs> yeah. NBA scouts and stuff, they're like, yeah, Dunleavy's that dude. Yeah. Like everybody wants a piece he of Dunleavy. He stepped out of the spotlight. He's like the Warriors assistant GM. Pull, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. We can they're, everywhere. they're uh, everywhere. Number two, Big 12 security. Mm. Um, this is this is twofold. Uh, first of all, Iowa State uh, hosting Texas State. Uh, Tyrese Hunter, Hunter coming back it was uh, a huge deal in, in that part of the country because uh, Tyrese Hunter was – uh, obviously a great player for Iowa State. Freshman of the year. Um, the program was rolling. They had a great year last year. Surprise year, but, uh, you know, the, the, the positive momentum. You think he's going to come back? He decides to put his name in the portal. That's That sucks. That's very bad, but that's okay. At least he's not going to transfer to an in-conference <laughs> school. We're not going to have to play right. him twice, right? Wrong. Uh, he transfers to Texas, so now he's back uh, uh, in Hilton to to play his former team. And you would think that, that the Iowa State – people would be fired up about this and they were um and the security guards at, at at hilton coliseum knew this so going into the game tate according to jake brand of the des moines channel 5 channel 5 <laughs> news there in des moines love that uh he said that the students were told they get kicked out if they simply use the word tyrese so if they talk about tyrese halliburton another iowa state basketball legend so they if they were just like tyrese halliburton should start in the all-star game they're tossed. If they talked about Tyrese, the musician, I think. Tossed. You're slash tossed. actor. Right. Slash actor. Slash right. model. Right. Mm -hmm. The first trip. I threat. love Tyrese in Too Fast, Too Furious. Yes. Tossed. 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 That's what he said, according to according to this. Mm. Um. So that those are the stakes, because they they didn't want, they <laughs> want to be classy. They don't want to be, you might remember Iowa State beat Iowa one year. They stormed the court. Uh, A guy got trampled that mm -hmm. was sitting courtside. Um, Seth Davis was very upset about this. Said this is why we don't we don't do court storming because this 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 man had his leg trampled. Then the man tweeted from the hospital room and was like, "I tripped over a cord. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's why I broke my leg." Um, oh man! But this sticks in the minds of everybody mm -hmm. in Iowa, and they said we got to be classy. We got to we got to be above board here. But then the students went on to throw Monopoly money in the air when Tyrese Hunter was introduced, as if to say Texas paid for him, which like I don't think is really. I don't think that hits quite as hard. There's a lot of like you have to make a lot of steps to get to that point. Yeah. But it doesn't like like in the name image likeness era, like that doesn't really hit right. like it used to, you know? Yeah. And saying like, that you a kid got money for his yeah. talent, you know, people are like, he should, you know. That that's the that's yeah, what we're like yeah. yeah, yeah. That that, that, right. that doesn't, doesn't really hit. But uh they also held up a sign in the front row that said <laughs> that they basically called him Judas. I think it literally called him Judas. It said Tyrese equals Judas. <laughs> um that that happened, and then when I at some point before the game, I think during warmups, they chanted Tyrese, clap, 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 clap. Um, and to my knowledge, none of these kids were kicked out, so the security guards did not do their job. I wanted to see all of them. I wanted to see all of them removed. Right. Not classy. This does not belong in Big Twelve basketball. Get it out of here. Did they storm the court? I didn't see after that. Iowa State didn't storm. My, right. my ESPN Plus feed cut out. <laughs> yeah, my, I, my, my seven day free trial expired. Right. I don't think that they stormed, or maybe they did. But at the end of the day, I mean, they should have gone at Tyrese. I mean, what did he expect? Yeah. What did he expect? They, they went at him and didn't get tossed. So there you go. So that was that was an empty promise, uh, or an empty threat. But uh, also, Kansas State beats Kansas. Huge win. Jerome Tang uh, gets on the the microphone and just says. That's what we do, basically. He's like, who cares who we beat? We yeah. win. Yeah. Basically. He's like, this is this is awesome, and I'm glad we did this, but never do this again. Mm -hmm. But also, I don't want to be the guy that says, don't do this again. But right. Yeah. Um, he, anyway, he, he almost had a Coach K shut up. You yeah. Know, he yeah, was like this, yeah. close, this close to, to what are you guys doing? Um, K-State, as you might remember, security – practiced for this moment <laughs> right. they 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 did a, a dry run of what might happen if we beat kansas at home the security guards were were in an empty arena practicing bringing the ropes out to to keep the students at bay so they don't storm the court uh and that did not work the, the court got stormed anyway so not only did you almost jinx your team bad vibes out there to be celebrating a win before it happens but then even when the win does happen the thing you practiced you didn't even pull off you know mm. so that's 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 two strikes right by my count like i said it gives me russell wilson practicing high fives vibes you know you don't you, like you don't <laughs> want to see that like russell, we don't like no one wants to see that russell that's ridiculous russell. that is ridiculous high five. uh finally number one on the fraud power rankings this week kj evans who is kj evans you might be asking five-star recruit uh committed to oregon um is is going to be playing for the ducks next year uh he is a senior in high school right now five-star guy 
I spoke to Yahoo, Tate, about one uh, Bronny James, and this was his quote. Right now, uh, or no, this is this is the this is the the snippet from the article. It says, "Right now, Oregon coach Dana Altman has commitments from four-star wing Mook, Mookie Cook, who actually plays LeBron James in an upcoming movie, huh? Guard Jackson Shellstad and five-star KJ Evans." Bronny told me he likes Oregon and I want him to visit here, Evans told Yahoo Sports. Everyone that's coming in is unselfish. We all cut, move, and don't hold the ball too long, so it's going to benefit him. Bronny can be more of a playmaker and a shot creator, and I think we would play really well together. How is this not tampering? Yes. Yeah, now, tampering. I know the James family has a history of tampering the, the tampering <laughs> rules. But uh, I, I think this is, this is I, 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 frankly, it's wrong. Um, I think an investigation needs to be launched. And uh, I, I think at a time when Ohio State is, we have our backs against the wall, this is not the time for KJ Evans to come out. And like, I, it, it's, it's, and it just stinks to high hell. And Bronny to Ohio State has to happen. It's the only way we can, we can right this wrong, what's going on with the program. And KJ Evans is tampering. He's literally tampering and he's, he's doing it right in front of our face. Yeah. I think there's a, you know, when LeBron signed that extension with the Lakers, everyone was like, why would he do that? That's really bad deal. But I think LeBron's at that point where he's like, you still have to pay me the, the most and the max. And I think with Nike, he's like, I need the next deal. I need the next contract. And Phil Knight is looking at him at the table and he says, that may be nice, but you know what I need? I need Bronny. And I don't like that. You know, I, I just typed in Bronny James and headline on the spun. Bronny James admitted he likes one school and the one school is Oregon. What? This is what the headline says. This is, and this is like they use the little KJ Evans situation. They're trying, they're trying to take Bronny. And I won't let I won't stand for this it. This is what a five game losing streak will do to you. you if know? Bronny it's... goes to Oregon, that is a mistake. That's a brand mistake. Do you want to continue to make Ohio people have to care about you and be your fan base? Yes. Look at Jake Paul. Look what he's doing. <laughs> he's like, I'll go to a Browns game. I'll act like I like the Browns. I'll even wear different colors than the Browns and go there. And you will still like me because I'm from Ohio. Bronny, tap into that. You need that fan base. They're diehard. You go to Oregon. What do you have? You you have what you already have. Which right. Is, you just have Nike fans. Nike fans. Brand fans. Like, that's, that's not... Go to Ohio State, Bronny. I, I, Don't make a mistake. And KJ Evans, stop tampering. Okay, here's a question. Uh, the James family calls me and they say, maybe they don't even call me, but uh, so I, I get word that I have to go to Eugene because Bronny's going on an official visit and I have to go stop it. Um, but it's also this weekend at the same time Ohio State's playing Iowa. What, what, which plane do I step on to save the program, Tate? Do I go to Eugene? To, to swat the bag out of Dana Altman's hand mm. and Phil Knight's hand and say, no, mm. do not give that to Bronny? Or do I take my championship DNA to Columbus and inject it into the veins of... I think Bronny's more important. I think it might be. <laughs> I don't want to tell you where I to fly, to the but I, I think Bronny... Bronny committing to Ohio State is such a reset for Chris Holtman with the fans. It really And I'm be, not yeah. saying that Bronny's going to come to Ohio State, and I don't think he is going to be that kind of player that that changes, you know, the, the, the program. But I do think the name recognition and LeBron, I mean, there's rumors that LeBron might play football while Bronny's playing basketball at Ohio state, at Ohio state. <laughs> he might be there. If Marvin Harrison jr. Decides to go to USC as some have speculated, there's a rumor that LeBron James is going to step in because he's obviously the best wide receiver out there, even though he hasn't played since high school, he's definitely the best receiver out there. So you get Bronny and Bron package deal, one playing football, one playing basketball. J.R. Smith's already paved the way you can do this different sport. I think it's there for the taking. It's it's tough times in Columbus right now. That's right. all I'm gonna say. And I, I I do apologize for for talking about Ohio State so much because I know a lot of people uh, are listening to this and they're like, you guys are relevant. No, the you're, haters, you're unranked. You know you're, what you the don't haters, matter, whatever. You know what the haters come here for. But they come they here do. for they bubble talk. They come here for the tears. They, they come, come here yeah, for right different tears. Whether it's Andy Katz's tears, <laughs> different tears, <laughs> or it's you and I crying. Uh, <laughs> they want those tears. Damn it. Yeah. Um, Every time Andy puts his tear talk up on Instagram, I respond with crying, laughing. <laughs> He's probably like is he making fun of my rankings, but those are the tears that I come to mind. It's a Stan Van Gundy, Kevin Durant right. moment. Right. Yeah. He's like, damn, Stan's spitting. He's Stan. like, I am not spitting, actually. I'm talking facts. <laughs> oh man. Buckeye's still number twenty one on Kim Pom though. So uh, nice. you know, what's we're not Carolina? Dead yet. 
Le- lower than that, I think. Right. Carolina beat Boston College, and then they fell in the net rankings. Carolina's Explain 25th. that. Explain <laughs> that. Buckeyes are 21. Uh, Carolina's 25th. Duke is 27th. Indiana's 28th. San Diego State, 29. So San Diego State, Duke, Carolina. We can't- <laughs> Kansas State. <laughs> What's Kansas State? Kansas State's 26. Buckeyes are 21. So we're better than Kansas State. Mm. Kansas State's 16-2. and two. <laughs> When do you think that the, the when, when does Ken Palm like did, when, when does ESPN make the pivot to Ken Palm? You know, like yeah. when, when in the numbers next to the team, but Ken, Ken, has Ken Palm hides behind. It's just an algorithm. This isn't like my actual, you know, this isn't my actual opinion. This is just the algorithm. Um, but do you think he's going to get heated at any point? Do you think there's ever a moment where like he has to answer? Do we need a Ken Palm press conference where we can ask him questions? Like, how could this be? How mm. could how could Kansas State be below Ohio State? Right. You know, but he because because he's really good at just being like, I, this isn't me saying this, this is the, this is the algorithm. It's like, yeah, but are we sure your algorithm? Is? No, but it goes back to you. You took calculus. I took cat. We took math. Yeah. What do you have to do? You have to show your work. Yeah. yeah. Show your work. Maybe that's what I respond the, to every bubble boy when they put out there. I'm just like, put, show your work. Kim Palm has Ohio State currently as uh, on the luck. Uh, that's my favorite uh, algorithm he has. 362 out of 363. Tate, we are we are now officially the second most unlucky team in college basketball behind stanford stanford's number one right we are second because jared has so, is doing a great job yeah he's coaching a great team just I, bad luck i think the luck is the rounding error isn't it isn't doesn't he just like he's like he's like here's my algorithm here's my standings if the standings are wrong mm-hmm. here's the luck no some guy Factor it, throw and, in the and luck. appreciate him a friend of the program reached out and they explained the luck you know like he, he wrote like a two-page tweet explaining the luck and i didn't read much. it I said, I said too long didn't read <laughs> <laughs> let's get the hell out of here do you have any shout outs <laughs> uh shout out to hubert davis uh ian jackson the number two prospect in 2024 picked north carolina north carolina the number one class in 2024 so much so that our boy <sighs> joe tipton is like in my dms being like how about them what you think? <laughs> i mean i never thought i'd see a day where tipton edits are actually in favor of north carolina it's a beautiful day has he hit you with the uh let's collab yet uh, i'm ready to collab should we share a post <laughs> should we <laughs> <laughs> Next top five recruit. He tagged me in one of the commits. I think oh, really? uh, James Brown, when James Brown committed recently, he like, you know, he has like nine people and it's like all the, you know, on three different yeah. profiles. And then I was one of the profiles. So shout out to James Brown. Ian Jackson, number two prospect again in 2024, five star guard. But that's two years away, right? That's, yeah. That's two years not away. this coming. No. That's, no. I'll be dead by then. Who well, cares? that's what a lot of Carolina skeptic, you know, skeptics are saying. They're like, "Will these kids even make it to campus?" Who, it's not who, about that. It's well, about who, the PR yeah, war. Who do you think is going to coach them? Mm. Do, you, do you think they'll still stick around when you guys change coaches? <laughs> <laughs> when Jeff Lebo steps up. When Hubert Davis goes to Texas, <laughs> honestly, Texas would hire Hubert Davis. Um, I want to shout out Big Game Boomer, who uh, <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. That was hilarious. Is the uh, is the original Parker of CVK Report? This is this is the man that Parker right. aspires to be. Um, big game boomer. Usually dabbles <laughs> in college football, but stepped into the college basketball realm and made his list of the top 100 media personalities in college basketball. Put me at 21. Mm. Put you at 23, which I felt was more of a nod to Michael Jordan than anything I, else. I, I appreciated it. I read. I I don't think he thought it all the way through like this, but I once I saw you at 23 and me at 21. I thought, okay, so Lafonso Ellis is between us. That's that's just like a funny visual to have <laughs> both of us. Um, What's funny is that of all the ESPN college basketball people, I love Lafonso Ellis. Yeah, like I actually respect Lafonso's awesome. opinion. And every year, he seemingly is in the range of who's going to win the title. Actually, yeah, you know. So when I saw Lafonso right there, I'm like, checks out. He laughs. Like, he laughs at Seth Greenberg way too much. Well, yeah, he's forced. My head. But and he's they, also a great hype man. You well, know? and like, they made him shave his head. Yeah, they did make and, I, and I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that. They hazed him into being that bald. goes all the way to the top, though. That's SVP. Right. That's right. SVP with his S- SVP it's ESPN. like thinks he's doing everyone a favor by saying shave. They come home. That's how mm-hmm. he says it when guys mm-hmm. start getting thin hairlines. But I mean, uh, SVP, I, I he, he's the best. He's the absolute best. And he's, right. I, I love him to death. But also, I got to call him out that like I know what he's doing. He's actually he thinks he's doing everyone a favor, but really what he's doing is he's crabs in a bucket, like pulling everyone down to his level. Don't you think? Right. Don't you think there's some of that going on? And I would too. Where he's like, I, he, he's tweeting me, come home, shave your head. And I'm like, Scott, I don't have, I, I got a great head of hair. And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, not for no, long. Not for long. <laughs> shave. No. Take it off. I think he did that to Lafonso. I don't think Lafonso, I think Lafonso had like a year or two left. And then he shaved, I think he shaved too soon, but uh, we were, we were 21 and 23, the top college mm. 
basketball personalities. I thought 21 might be a, uh, an Evan Turner dig, but I don't think Big Game Boomer is thinking that. that it could be. I don't think it's that deep. You it know? could be. Putting me at 21. I think Jeff Goodman at one is payola. I'll go ahead and say <laughs> Jeff it. Goodman at one is That's how payola. you know it's a joke. He paid Big Game Boomer. <laughs> okay. He paid on Venmo. Someone look up this Venmo. But that's why Big Game Boomer is the best, because if I was putting a list together and I was trying to troll everybody, Jeff Goodman would be my number one as right. well. Absolutely, right. no question. About Mine would have been Doug Gottlieb. <laughs> Gottlieb would be pretty good. That's one. how you fire everybody. Up. He put uh, he put Coach K at number seventy one. So I, <laughs> I thought that awesome. was Mr. K wasn't on the list, so the dog right is at seventy one. The uh, the former coach of the Duke Blue Devils wasn't on the list. I'm but. looking at the list now. I haven't really like looked at it. I mean, Scott Van Pelt at sixty three is hilarious. Like that's how disrespectful. <laughs> Putting Kim Palm above Scott Van Pelt is like you like now i'm triggered now i'm responding now i'm commenting so he has fed me the trash i am eating the trash and uh you did it again damn it you did it again you know this list i didn't even see half these people on it i didn't even think rostein was on it uh, robbie hummel's not on it robbie hummel's not on it yeah did you send it should we send it to him yeah, sure should be right. <laughs> i'm gonna quote seriously. tweet it at robbie hummel. like damn robbie <laughs> damn that robbie thought you had it what happened jim ithaca college because mm-hmm. of rostein's on here yeah my boy there you go that's good. Class. I thought that was the coolest part, just seeing all the college. I mean, that's all I really cared about. That is true. That Fanta is at 38 is crap. Who? Fanta. Oh, yeah. Fanta at 38 is a lie. But that's right behind close. Reggie Miller feels right. No. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> we need to hire somebody here. Evan's on there, 92. He is? Yeah. No way. This is the funny. Like, this is why uh, Twitter is so funny, because... Someone sees this list like an, an a, just a casual fan of college basketball, and they're like, they think the that someone actually made. Dude, when Parker the made ranking. his list, and I forget where he put us, um, I had people sending it to me, like, like congratulations, dude, dude, congrats, man, this is big, right. this is big time, right? This is big, you did it. <laughs> um, any other shout outs? I'm above Tom Crean on this list. <laughs> Greg Gumble. <laughs> Greg, Greg, Greg Gumble, Gumble just wants behind me. <laughs> What a Greg Gumbel is hilarious. What you imagine Gumbel, Doris, yeah. Burke. <laughs> yeah, Doris Burke. Yeah, Doris Burke. That is it. Has Doris Burke ever, in the last how many years, spoken about college basketball? She hates college basketball. I think she's yeah yeah. I can tell just in her in the tenor of her voice. She's like, I I will wage that war against college basketball, but it's okay. Respect. Yeah, I love Doris Burke, but I do too. She's uh she doesn't yeah. love us. <laughs> she uh, doesn't Jim, love college do you basketball. have any shout outs you wanna? You wanna? No, I think that's about it. Thanks to Fanta for coming on. It's yeah. great. Do you have any? any Honestly, I don't have any uh, any really big shout outs. I'm really thrown just looking at this list. There were so many people that I didn't even see were were on this list that I am now just absolutely cackling at. This is amazing. <laughs> You're gonna do this with the rest of your day, right? Just look through the list. I but... should have looked at the list harder when you first sent it to me. Um, no, that's all I got. Anything else from you? You're going to Columbus. I mean, I'm going to Columbus. Uh, I, I, I'm delivering a win. I just want to remind everybody that that's definitely going to happen. Um, fun games this weekend, though. Uh, as you said, UCLA, Arizona, I think, is going to be the big one. That's, that's the game. That's the, that's the big one we're fired up about. So um, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think Arizona is going to win that game, and they're going to get me back, you know, <sighs> believing a little bit. And we know how it, it goes. Is it more national must, title UCLA, Arizona Final Four? Is it must win or can't lose for Arizona? Can't lose. Because I think if they lose – UCLA in this game, it's over. The the dream is dead. Right. And I think Tommy Lloyd to Texas is on the table. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um Mark Few to Arizona. Yeah. I, you have to <laughs> someone has to start that conversation. Uh oh, last shout out. Uh Carol Baskin's husband's alive. You saw that? Saw that. Do we have confirmation or is it just like is it from Carol Baskin saying that? I don't know. I didn't read the What do you mean? Like he this is the that's man. what they're saying. Like he's, he alive. Alive. he's, he's like living in the, he's living in Costa Rica. Like he left. Yeah, he escaped. Yeah, he just ran away from. That was like an old thing that people used to do. Like they would just leave their family and then go so start dude, another I, family. I daydream about it still to this day. Right, like, that'd be yeah. awesome. Right, like, be... he was dry, and they're like, you can't call me. Yeah, you can't find me. Dude, that's awesome. That I have like... just cold hard cash and a Cadillac. Yeah. yeah, remember like like that, that's what that, that that'll be up if you watch like old western movies. Like the guy that. Cause, Cause you don't really think about it all the way through, but the, the, the guy comes in, robs the bank, gets on his horse. And then when he's like a mile out of town, he's, d- he's gone he's forever. Gone. It's gone. You're, right. he's lo- you you right. lose. Right. You as a town lose. As you're soon as they get out of eyesight, you're like, I might never you're see like, that sure. person again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about that. When people used to go out back in like just the nineties, they're like, 
I'll meet you at seven there. Yeah. And now if you get somewhere at seven and no one's there, you're like texting them. You're like, where are you? I'm already yeah. here. Back then you just had to wait. Yeah. Stand around, fumble around. Jim, NFL you know. playoffs. Should we give predictions real quick? Uh, Kansas City, Jacksonville. Kansas City, Jacksonville. Like? Um, Kansas City. I think Kansas City. <laughs> okay. That's my only prediction. I think. I put Jacksonville. I think, I think that's my that's my half. lock of the Kansas City money line is my lock of the there you lock go. of the weekend. And Ohio State money line. Those are my two picks. If you're a gambler, Ohio State money line. Uh, and, and I weirdly Kansas. like the Cowboys. Giants at Eagles. Who do you like that Saturday night? That's I tough. think the Giants are going to win. Yeah, it's a tough matchup for the Eagles, but I can't see the Giants winning back-to-back -back playoff games with Daniel Jones. Give yeah. me the Eagles. Give me the Birds. And then I think the Cowboys Bengals beat the Niners, Bears. and the Cowboys come to Philadelphia, and everyone's like, Cowboys, Super Bowl, you mm. already know, and then the Eagles win. What's the most fun Super Bowl matchup? What's the I want like Eagles, Chiefs, Bills. Cowboys, Bills. Maybe. Cowboys, Bills, Chiefs, I can't, Chiefs, Cowboys. I can't watch the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Chiefs, Cowboys would be probably... Probably. Right. That's probably the like the ratings draw, right? Like that's the one. Cowboys Jets. You get a New York team now. <laughs> Bills Eagles. A Mecca. In Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Arena football. Madison Square Garden. Billy Joel yeah, serenading. Being rated us. very high. <laughs> Halftime show is mutt busting. <laughs> yeah, with Billy Joel. I was uh, I was at dinner last night and someone brought up a rodeo and how they like they're like I can't believe that still happens or whatever and then I was thinking about mutt and busting and I was, like, yeah. I was like they only knew about mutt and busting well they, they were saying like that uh, uh it was like it wasn't like a, someone like the, that I knew the but, animal cruelty angles right right going? they were yeah. just like they're like can you believe that they still do these rodeos you know and uh and then I was thinking to myself not only can I believe it I was just talking about mutt and busting yeah I was the, yeah but it was that's the L A R you know uh, L A yeah dude, they don't get it right right. Right. Yeah, go 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 spend like people people that watch Bambi and then think that like not to not, you know I'm not trying to go all Joe Rogan here but like mm. you, these people that watch Bambi and think the deer are like the the sweetest animals on earth mm -mm. go 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 live in rural America dude you want to shoot like I'm not even a hunter and I want to shoot every deer in the head <laughs> right if you they're don't freaking like they're just like massive rats with antlers right and they're running in front they, of your they're, car they're running in front of your car and like so they, they're they disgusting they give you Lyme disease they eat your right. crops I don't even have crops and they ate all my crops right they eat my trash dude they <laughs> taking our jobs <laughs> these our damn job. deer taking my jobs like, dude, get out of get out of the city for me one time and you'll come back and be like okay i changed my mind okay okay kill him <laughs> <laughs> all right this show's gone on long enough everybody have a great weekend uh if you're a buckeye fan go buckeye i will see you in the shot um help me help me yell at the boys just i'm just gonna yell make shots yeah 40 minutes for the rest of your life the smartest thing that ohio state is doing is that they're building their fan base with the losses because then every team that beat them is like that's our quality that's win. our quality win yeah. right and no, now you're just growing now now nebraska that's a good fans point. are like we probably have a lot of people for ohio state. like people want it want me to be mad when buckeyes lose but we probably have a lot of listeners now that are actually on my side and are like we need ohio state to be good my google like oh you know when i search games or whatever like ohio state's the second search of like it's north carolina <laughs> men's basketball and then it's ohio statements basketball <laughs> <laughs> you've grown the fans are growing <laughs> damn what they say goodbye everybody <laughs> <laughs>